out. Let's see. I don't actually know how it works with, with YouTube if you try to click uh, start a stream a couple minutes before. Are, are, are you guys able to hear me? <clears throat> Otan, are you are are you there in uh, in chat? If you if you guys can hear me and, and we're ready to go, then I think that we can we can begin today. Um, I think if if we're not and I'm just talking to myself, then that's okay. This will be a fun a fun warm up introduction. You guys will like jump in in a, in a cold open, and I'll be in the middle of a rant about stonemasons. But you know, if you can hear me, great. Um, I'm Walker. Here we are. Okay, gr ex excellent. Welcome, Otan. Um, yeah, welcome to we we play games. I'm Walker, and here we are in Age of Wonders four with our first single player. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna build these things and like what we're gonna how we're gonna deal with them but we're gonna do a single player stream today we're gonna aim to do like an entire game I think we're gonna be able to do that with some like pretty interesting changes to our, our uh, map settings and stuff um, and then like obviously depending on on how people feel about map settings in the future we can figure out different things but I'm, I'm vibing with with what we're gonna do today and it's gonna be fun because we're gonna use a stonemason so historically stonemasons have not actually been very good in Age of Wonders 4 and it's for a couple of different reasons so first like you might think all right if I want to get my capital city up and going and growing and building good stuff with with you know infrastructure, then like you want to do a stonemason because that'll get you extra production income. But in reality, the way that that production works in Age of Wonders Four is that first, a lot of your production for most factions is not going to come from the cities themselves. It's going to come from like farming the map. So anytime you go to a resource node that's defended, like a quarry that's defended by uh, enemy troops and you fight there, you're gonna get a big bunch of production that's gonna be assigned to your closest city. You're also gonna get some production from infestation sometimes. Sometimes if you're lucky, you find one early on like an ancient wonder, and then you can just funnel tons and tons of production into a city without using the city's infrastructure at all. That's like the first ding against stonemason from a, like a meta perspective. The second and I think biggest problem with stonemasons from a meta perspective is that in order to achieve the boost, you had to build two farms. When it came to early game in uh, Age of Wonders 4, it was and remains like very, very, very important to try to figure out how to get an academy down in your capital in like most of your cities, like pretty much as quickly as possible. But academies are extremely expensive in terms of their production, so you absolutely need the boosts on these. Um, if you're if you're like just building a raw academy, uh, something something's not right in your economy over there. But in order to, to build a boosted academy, you need two quarries and one forester. So this meant, and of, and of course you require a, a research post. So this meant that like in the very beginning of the game, there just wasn't a lot of space for most economies to be running a lot of farms. Um, which of course in order to have a stonemason get boost you need two farms so that means like you need to do either a flash where you take two tiles that aren't farms turn them over to farms um, and then like turn them back over to something else and hope that you can build the the stonemason in like a two or three turn window with just a lot of production in the city that's possible if you have a boost that you've like lined up really really carefully by clearing like a you know a fight on the 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 overworld or whatever but it's like it's pretty difficult to uh, ensure that you're going to do that and so typically in order to do this you you had to run like at least one farm and then have like you pick up a farm on a population growth and then immediately switch them both over that's usually easier to accomplish but that means that you have a lag where you have to run a farm and in the olden days when um food was like a meaningfully different when it came to a population growth it didn't really matter that much uh, how many extra f like food bonuses you got because you got 40 bonus food from your town hall um, and now town hall one only gives you 30 food so the base food that you get from in each in each city is actually lower but the way that they've compensated for this is they've also dramatically reduced the amount of food that each population needs in order to grow so what this means as we have that in the the like the other patch notes breakdown is that food bonuses are better these days. That means that it's it's generally going to be a little easier for you to find the time to pick up a stonemason. Unfortunately for stonemason, that still doesn't fix the the broader broader meta problem with stonemason, which is do you really want to be building 
production with production, because let's do just like a little bit of math, right? If you assume that you do not have the boost, which frankly, we honestly should probably not do that, because if you're building a stonemason, then I'm hoping that at some point you're going to have the boost. You can get around the gold problem by just like, you know, floating um, tiles, which we'll, we'll show whenever we get to, to playing, like switching from one tile to the next. But like, if you're doing that, it's going to cost extra gold. You'll still pick up the production bonus at the end, but you do not get refunded the gold throughout. And so that means that you need a bunch of extra gold if you're going to be doing that, which means you do not have a bunch of extra gold to spend on infrastructure. It has its own cascading series of problems. Um, but the bigger problem was that if you were building a stonemason, the only thing the stonemason is giving back to you is production. That means that it's not actually paying you out with like any other secondary resource along the way. Now Workshop, you know, got around this by giving you a bunch of draft. Fortunately, it's only five now. Like Workshop is still probably one of the best buildings in the game, um, but it's a little it's a little more balanced now. 10, 10 and 10 was insane. But stonemasons, you just mostly didn't build them. Because like, if you did build a boosted stonemason early on, then it meant that you weren't building a boosted arcane institute, right? If you, or, you know, you were building it first or, or instead of, or whatever. Um, Cause like generally you, you don't have time to build everything before you get to your town hall two, and then you want to get your town hall two online. So that way you can get your uh, wizard tower online. So that way you can start getting your extra, um, your extra Imperium. So like, you just don't have time to build everything before you start doing the, the really important infrastructure stuff, uh, especially with all those other things in the, in the way. And so like, you can't just wave your hands and say, all right, well, you're just gonna get infinite time for the production to pay itself back with a stonemason. Cause you just frequently don't have time to build it before you build all of your important things. And then by the end of like building all of your important things, the time that's remaining in the game isn't enough to justify building a stonemason. So like, it just, it, it, it's rare when you actually find a situation where you need it but that's where we're gonna jump in on today's build um, and I think today's build is probably gonna be one of these things that is gonna need to use stonemasons I don't know if it's gonna be good or not I've attempted to make this thing as like pseudo competitive as possible but like I would just wanted to build with something that's gonna play around with a really weird and very different design space for uh, Age of Wonders like most of the time when we play on the multiplayer side of things we're just doing like sweaty crazy competitive stuff um, and we're gonna bring that that effort to Hermita Ta uh, Taylor today which is our, our randomly generated name for our, our build um, but we're gonna be playing with Goatkin and we are gonna be doing our best to make feudal and uh, druidic terraformers do some stuff so let's let's like talk through the build the strengths the weaknesses ways to nest to like you know make modifications maybe improve things so Goatkin here, we're going to be taking Tough and we're going to be taking Mammoth Mounts. I think that generally speaking, you do want to take, um, I, I think that probably Tough and Resistant, but where, where are you? I think these should be mutually exclusive the same way that like a lot of the other uh, mounts are mutually exclusive both because of the points, but also because of the, the mechanics involved with them. I just, I think that those two things together are, are kind of a problem. You can play around with that on your own if you want, but it is really oppressive. I think in this case, we're gonna run with tough just cause this is gonna give us a lot of extra durability in the very beginning of the game. Um, and that's gonna be a big problem for Feudal cause Feudal's units are, are garbage. And so like keeping some of them alive in the very beginning, so that way you can at least bring four units to every single fight is really important. Like it, if you, if you don't, if you don't have at least four units for each fight from a like an experience points perspective, then you're missing out on EXP. Uh, but more importantly, because Feudal also has some issues where like, in order for us to get the most out of our ruler, we are probably gonna have to take a, a Lord ability very early on. And that means that we're like also kind of minus one level in terms of fighting growth on our heroes. So you got, you're gonna have some issues where your army is not very strong. You're gonna have to supplement it with your traits and something like tough or resistant does a lot to, to keeping your units alive. And then Mammoth Mounts, I think, is going to be like just one of the exotic mounts that I want to play around with. You don't necessarily need an exotic mount with anybody. I think I think that if you're if you're interested in playing around with exotic mounts, that Feudal is a great way to start on it because you can use uh, knights pretty early. 
That's, I, yeah, tough and resistant should 100% be exclusive. Like, there's no reason to, like, it's so, it's so silly. Like, and maybe that's something that we can just do in our rule set. I think that's fine. I, like, I think if you just descriptively say to people, hey, you can't take both of those together, then that's, that's good. But both of those together is really stupid and, and very oppressive when it comes to PvP. And then if you take those two together, then you end up with just, like, one point left over, at which point it, it almost always is correct to take Hardy. And so you see in vanilla that the combination of those three traits actually really is, like, the, the combination of those three together is like S++. I think individually those pieces are generally still a little le less in terms of value than the mounts, but it does depend on the size of your map. Like I think on smaller maps that mounts are actually more important. And that because we're gonna be doing a 1v1 against um, a major uh, advantage AI, we're we're gonna we're gonna get some good value out of our mounts because we're gonna see some defenders. Defenders in uh, Age of Wonders 4 are like a lot of a lot of feudal's units, just not particularly good. Um, we'll see the the our peasant pikemen because we're gonna watch a lot of auto battles today. We might allow for us to do a manual battle in like a wizard duel where our ruler is there and their ruler is there and it's going to be like a dramatic finale if people want to see that we could do that but like most of what we're going to be doing here is um economic uh development and like seeing how that works because that you can absolutely port to uh multiplayer and that's kind of like between you and me like i'm kind of just practicing to see how does this thing work in multiplayer um but feudal i think is actually really well positioned to take advantage of food being a lot better in the new patch because uh, you have levy camp and like historically at levy camp has been one of these things that you just like don't build because like why would you ever spend production on a farm question marks but like now because this is uh like may maybe running one or two extra farms is not the end of the world maybe maybe feudal can manage to run food Maybe we can use uh, maybe we can use faith productively. We'll we'll see. No promises, because feudal does desperately want warding. That's like one of the downsides to the uh, the faction. Without without tome of warding, you are a lot worse. Uh, and without tome of cryomancy, your early game uh, creep is a lot worse. So. Uh, what are we doing in terms of traits? Well, what we're doing in terms of traits is we're trying to ma maximize like the value that we get out of our feudal. So first in feudal, of course, you have like really low quality units. You're supposed to be able to keep them alive with the steadfast ability, but unfortunately the auto resolve AI doesn't really use steadfast very well. So like using that just doesn't, doesn't do a lot. Um, and instead, what you need to do is you just need to lean into your economy. And that's what we're going to get out of Druidic Terraformers. So Druidic Terraformers is plus 20% food if the city core province contains grasslands or fungus fields. Um, and plus 20% production if it's forest, rocky, or mountains. Now fortunately, a lot of these things are not mutually exclusive. You can have grassland forest, you can have uh, grassland rocky, like you can you can get even snow uh, forest that 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 happens too but the the first and biggest thing i think you have to lever against druidic terraformers is that a this does not apply to the resources that are coming in from the map and that is a big big problem one of the biggest strengths of fabled hunters which now is 75 percent instead of a a hundred um this is this is still really 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 powerful and if you're trying to build like a meta faction then this should be like the first this goes in the square hole uh brick that you look at like how does this interact with your build i don't think it's mandatory necessarily because like you i think you can have fun with and do powerful things with a lot of other stuff uh but this is an amazing baseline and unfortunately this really doesn't like hold up in in comparison to the amount of resources it gives you in the beginning of the game when you're doing just like normal stuff because when you're doing normal stuff remember most of your resources are going to be coming initially from that town hall one town hall one does not have like plus 400 resources of everything it's plus 30 food and plus 20 production 20 percent on this and 20 percent on this that is those are joker numbers that that means nothing get this out of here um but in this case if you take uh 
a little bit of extra time to work up druidic terraformers and give it more resources in, then you can actually get more out, right? If your flat production is higher because you happen to have a lord who gives plus 25 production in your city, then it's actually going to be getting plus 30 production in the city because of the plus 20% extra production here, but it is also just one of those things that's going to scale up on its own pretty, pretty nicely. I think more important here is just the fact that food is not is not miserable and so now you can actually if you're if you're doing enough to keep your food production high then you can actually make it to the point where you're you don't have to build things before you pick up the boost and that means that in reality if you're doing that you're saving a ton in terms of gold which means that you can build higher level infrastructure even faster which is good because in this case you know hopefully we get production the biggest thing i think you can say about direct terraformers is that you're not even guaranteed to get food and production in your your uh, capital if you were guaranteed to get both of these in your capital and your city core then this would be a lot better but i have had starts where you just like don't get either of them i had a start where you just got mana and it's a lot worse when you just get mana as long as you get one of those two in your in your capital then you're all right so like don't i would say do not take this with arctic adaptation right now i would say that's probably not a good actually i would say most of the adaptations i don't think play as well with this um just because like they they do start precluding access to a, a really broken uh capital and that's what you kind of need and so like we're just gonna lean into that and we're gonna take wonder architects so this is like an oops all rng start when it comes to what you get out of your your capital but it does give you enormous enormous upside in terms of early game economic growth because some of the wonders that you can pick up do interact favorably with druidic terraformers right if you pick up a uh, a, a spring fairy place which is like i think probably the best thing for you to find here with uh this feudal build because it's just it's so it's so much food um but more importantly it also gives you the 20 percent production and the ability to like buy russia a fairy very very good but all this stuff should work together to make our stonemasons go from 15 production up to 21. that means that the actual payout in terms of time for them to like justify having been built goes from around 12 turns to only nine and then after that of course they're also going to be adding more and more and more production to the, the board because they are going to keep that production that's not a, a discount on the, the building it's just a bonus on the the output we're going to take tome of primancy here like I, we won't take this in every single build i promise but for things that i think are generically not as powerful tome of primancy is a pretty reasonable place to start it is a little awkward with this particular build because we are going to be playing with mammoth mounts mammoth mounts i think is just like a, a fun thing that i want to try out i i think that getting four extra frost resistance making it so like your defenders are all of a sudden 50 percent resistant to to frost means that there are some fights like some ancient wonder fights that go from being difficult to being pretty trivial um and so like that's a, a really nice pickup in terms of just utility and then you know plus 10 hit points across the board for your your guys is good but it does mean that your civil war against your free city is a little more difficult with a tome of cryomancy on the books um like not the not the best combination of things there but it does scale really well after the the free city fight because you get an spi you get like two uh nice enchantments and because we are going to be playing with feudal and amount we're of course going to be moving into glades so having frost heroes is actually really nice uh so the tome of zeal workforce does work with terraformers we are probably going to take that um the only downside is that in order for us to take that we do need to find a lot of mana in order for us to justify it on this build because we are going to be playing with a champion um i wish that i could play with a wizard king but i really do want to play with crow master bow i think that this is another one of these like generically powerful things right now that's worth trying out um for most for most builds just to see how you feel with it on that build because it it just it does so much for you in terms of early game creeping getting one extra unit that can tank for you that can absorb retaliation hits for you and can apply blind which is actually like a, a really big deal when it comes to clowning on uh ranged units because like ranged units are generally not that dangerous but uh, like if you if you have a bow they go like a, a crow actually then they go from being like not that dangerous to being like 
borderline free experience points, which Feudal desperately needs, because we're, again, minus one experience point. Um, and then, of course, like, the, the bigger problem for Feudal is just, like, because their early game military is peasants and archers and they don't do anything, um, your early game creeping is very expensive, you lose a lot of units, the resources that you should be devoting to your infrastructure ends up going back to replenishing your army, uh, and then, like, things just kind of fall apart from there. But hopefully we can avoid all that today. Um, that's that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be running this uh, Hermina Taylor, the blue-blooded goat men, and see how we do with it. Uh, wait a second. Do I have to do I have to click overwrite? I didn't change anything. I don't think I changed anything. Did I change anything? No, I don't think I changed anything. I think you're just trying to give me a panic attack, Age of Wonders 4. But we're, we're playing with the uh, the champion, not really for the economic bonuses, but because I want to play with Crowmaster Bow. And unfortunately, if you play with a Wizard King um, and you unequip Crowmaster Bow, then you do not have a weapon. And you do actually not have a weapon. There's no other, like, struggle Pokemon at, uh, attack. You, you do not have a weapon. So we're not going to be playing on Brutal. I think Brutal is just, like, slow, like... This is, there's a reason that the settings that world that uh, get changed around here are under game flow. Starting conditions low just means that both you and the AI um, have no, not, not, not the resources to hero, uh, to hire a hero in turn one. That's not so much of a big deal now in uh, the wolf patch, but it just means that like both of you start with less and that's a symmetrical effect. So it doesn't really make it harder. It just makes it like slower. And then high world threat, I think generally, it really just depends on if you want the threat to be the other uh, empires or if you want it to be the world itself. Like the world itself is a lot more threatening on high, but the other empires in the game die to that world a lot more. Um, and you can just like track it in an Excel spreadsheet and they just like spend like a third of the time in the void on high world threat. And I want to fight an enemy AI rather than the world. So we're going to play on normal, but like we're not going to, we're not going to leave it as that we're gonna make the ai the hardest we're gonna give them a major advantage and we're gonna give ourselves a minor handicap we could play with major handicap but i want this to be like a, a information that's gonna help people play multiplayer and if you're playing on a major handicap you have to do very weird stuff um in order to do in order to do that we're we're playing today we're playing today i'm i'm just uh we're, we're going through the build and and stuff oh pvp uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play today. No, we're playing PvP tomorrow and Sunday. Um, today is just gonna be single player. Is this gonna be us in this this very hard major advantage AI? And we'll play. I think we're doing large. I I played a little bit on very large, but I want the game to be like over. Um, and and like for us to be able to see what feudal can grow into. So we're gonna play with world sealed active. So that way, if somehow it becomes a cold war between us and the uh the AI, we can win through seals. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Think, I think we're gonna kill them, um, but we're gonna try to do it with, oh yeah, we're gonna do hero resurgence never, heroes go to owner, fast. Uh, we're, we're gonna leave this on in case people like do wanna see a manual combat, um, cause I'm not opposed to doing them. I just like, I don't think, I don't think we should be doing them. I think that if we're doing a, a like a manual combat to save a unit, then you're not playing like with PVP standard um, rules in line, and also if you if you reload to save a hero, then you're not doing it either, Walker. So that's we're not going to do that either. We're if 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 our if our hero dies on turn two, then our hero dies on turn two. All right. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. This is just, this is uh, this is pretty standard what we're going to run with, and then we're going to see um, what feudal can do to actually grow its economy here. This has just been such a strange, a strange build for me. I think the the biggest and weirdest thing about it is the evaluation of like the different starting things. Like here, Shatter Skull Keep is normally like a fantastic pickup um, in terms of good value for you, but it's it is a lot worse than the uh, than the fairies, honestly. And I think. I think unfortunately we are gonna have to. So here, what are we looking at, Walker? What are we looking at? Let's let's pause before we start talking about the wonders. Um, so the first thing you should do whenever you load into Age Wonders Four is go ahead and just like pan out, get a look for like how big your map is. Um, if you are playing on a one v one, then like you're not gonna have an infinite amount of space 
you, we're not going to be planning for like, well, what if we have like six cities? If we get to four cities, uh, I won't be like amazingly surprised, but we'll probably start like not with tons. Snow is like not fantastic, but doesn't preclude a uh, food bonus here. Um, so we did get Druidic Terraformer's food. We did get Druidic Terraformer's ha uh, hammer and mana oh man we got all three all right so th this is uh this is gonna be a spicy capital this is like yes the stuff near near us is not like the highest quality thing in the universe in terms of real value but that is um that's gonna that's gonna scale really well that means that everything that we do here in the city is gonna get bonuses basically uh but yeah just like Go ahead, see what the size of your map is. Uh, if you have an underground AI, it'll be smaller. And then start scouting around the edge of the map and see if there's anything under the, the fog nearby that's that's valuable. So uh, you need to start getting used to like spotting the shape of Ancient Wonders and the shape of windmills to see, oh, there's a free city here, there's a silver wonder there. Um, and, and as I was highlighting here, this is a place where there's a fairy. Fairies are ridiculously important for this build simply because you can rush them out really early with uh, Rally of the Leashes. And I found that Feudal, like kind of no matter what I do, does struggle on doing uh, elemental or magical damage. And that, that's a big problem. Like you can rely on your bannermen, but part of part of the other problem here with bannermen is how hilariously bad these guys are. Soothing Standard has a four turn cooldown. Why is this a four turn cooldown, Triumph? Look at this Bannerman. This Bannerman is asking you, why is this a four turn cooldown? This could be a three turn cooldown and it would not be broken, I promise. Um, but it means that like Bannerman, they mostly just do their Bulwark Standard. That's not bad, but it means that like there's a lot less healing in Feudal in their uh, early game creep. And that does matter. The, like that's, that is part of, that's part of the, uh, the calculation. So what do we, what else do we have near us? So we're going to need to hook down here to go grab that, uh, that oh man, Walker, here's where a pin would be great, um, to go grab that. So we're going to need to go down this way. That means that we're inherently going to walk past this banner. This is a banner that whenever you pick it up, which means that whenever a unit from your army walks onto that spot, that that unit gains one, uh, one level. We don't need to bring all of these units into this fight, though. This is a four unit fight with entwined thralls. I think there's a non-zero chance that we can win that without cost, uh, without losing any units as long as we're careful. So why would we do that? Why would we not bring an extra unit? Well, the reason is because of the ways these experience points are going to go. So here we're going to get four experience points per unit that we fight. Each of these is a tier one unit, so we get four. That means that we get four on each unit if we only bring four units. So that means that if we drop this archer out of this fight and we bring these guys in, then everyone here is going to get four, including leveling up the snow spirit and leveling up the pikeman and leveling up the hero. That means that if these all survive this fight, which <laughs> at a major, uh, a minor, a minor handicap, we're not guaranteed, but if they all survive this fight, then they'll all gain a level from the fight itself, and then they'll gain a level from walking onto the banner. So this is a way that we can kind of just like slingshot levels. I, I really hope that this works, because like Feudal desperately needs a good early game fight, fight like this. And so here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch this fight. We're gonna do it live though. So we're gonna go into manual combat and we're just gonna click the, uh, the auto combat Slide, sign up there and we're gonna see this fight live and I'm gonna immediately get mad at myself because you know what I did I forgot to unequip the bow god damn it Walker <laughs> you had one job you had one job unequip the bow well if we lose a unit here we lose a unit here like this is that's gonna be my fault um man oh, I can't believe I forgot to unequip the bow all right at least we get lucky we get a frozen so doing it this way with like the auto combat toggled on uh does mean that you can't turn mana off. Um, so like, I wish there were a way to do that this way so that we could watch these these very dramatic fights a little, uh, a little more live without casting mana. But, oh man, 
this is this is spooky because entwine thralls do do a lot of damage with the ways that dots have have stacked up now um we also as i mentioned don't have great healing in the form of bannermen and because the ai chose to use the strengthened ability there uh we didn't get any extra any extra resilience by freezing anyone that means that we need the ai to stop attacking our hero otherwise we're in a bit of trouble Oh no! Like the, the, one of the one of the nice things for feudal is that their bannermen um, do do a lot of damage because they do a spirit type, which is just a great type, um, and that's that's really good for us actually. There that we're reducing these model counts. That's another thing that's going to work to our advantage in this fight. Oh no! Oh no! Snow spirit, you can do it, kid. Believe in yourself. Oh man. I really hope we don't lose that one, because that is a huge piece of scaling for us. But if we do, you know what? We are in Tome of Cryomancy. This is not the last uh, Snow Spirit we're going to see in this game. This is this is the prototype. Oh, oh. <gasps> the Snow Spirit, it's going to make it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is this is this is the best. All right. Brittany made it. Um, let's rename Brittany. And now, as I mentioned, all of a sudden everyone's level three. So this is this is a really big deal in terms of early game scaling. Um, that's like one of, you can choose to delay your your banner. I think choosing to delay it so that way you can do a catapult from two to four is really really effective. But like there, it was very very important that we didn't bring everyone in, into that fight because if we had, we would be way down in terms of of our scaling. All right, so let's see where are we gonna go. As I said, we have to go down this way, but this is like really inefficient to walk through forest. Forest has eight movement point cost per turn, um, whereas snow has six. Now, unfortunately, because we did not choose uh, the snow movement um, or adaptation, we don't have the ability to move as quickly on this map as we would otherwise. That's that's okay. Like, we'll get over it. We we have a level three hero that's gonna go a long way to, to helping us out. And I'm gonna unequip the bow. The reason being that just like, A, these are going to be a lot more durable because of the, the plus three defense against non-flanking attacks, but B, the ranged AI is just not very good. Um, it does prioritize getting a lot of accuracy, so that way it has guaranteed damage output, which is good, like props to it for that, but it does mean that like your, your guys are... Uh, so this game does not have match matchmaking yet. When to recruit any strategies. So heroes, I think you want to be getting basically the best hero that you can. Um, so that means that you want to try to find a free city to recruit from, I think. Or if you find the uh, the Silver Ancient Wonder that you can clear for free, then you want to clear that one. Because it's not just about like getting, a, getting one like one turn earlier or whatever. You want to be able to get heroes that are coming with growth that you didn't in invest time into and that's what you get whenever you re recruit a really high quality hero like the uh the one that comes from ho hopefully we see it hopefully we see it we saw, we've seen it in enough pvp that like i i i, I won't feel like we're owed it from a, a chance perspective it's just very strong and i like having it um oh all right can we can we rename Brittany? Or do we need to get to legendary rank? Does anybody know if you can rename units in uh, in Age of Wonders 4? This is like the, the single player experience that I'm sure everyone is here for. Um, all right, let's build a workshop. So it used to be really important to just like wait until you could hire your hero. But of course in this case, you can't do that because there's Imperium. So that means if you don't do anything for like the first end turns until you can recruit a hero, that's not good. So a, a good high value hero would be anyone that starts, first you wanna look for the ones that start with uh, level three. That's why recruiting from a, a free city is so good. You just get two free levels. Um, and because you know you have to bring at least four units to every single fight in order to guarantee that you're actually getting the most experience points per fight, that, that can mean that like starting at level three instead of starting at level one, Sometimes it's just one banner or not, but sometimes it's actually like you have to get through three fights. And if you have to get through three fights in order for your hero to get to level three, then you're like way behind the other person because the other person's already at level four. And once you get to level four, that's when you get your first signature skills. So then you just go about like 
great value train. So basically starting at a higher level is, is an enormous upgrade in terms of your early game strength. Um, and uh, you, you should prioritize that over most of the other early game stuff. The ones that give you important affinities are also really good. That is, that is, yeah, they're, those are also really, really good. The, like if you if you can get extra affinity for Materium early or something like that, or extra material or extra shadow, that can be huge. Um, yeah, both of those are are actually really, really, really nice. Here we see uh, one lone spider on top of this mana node. How much do you guys want to bet that when we move down here that we're going to discover that there's actually five spiders and that they're all tier two? It's not going to be five spiders, but it might be a couple. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to send the pikeman ahead right here. So that way, if I need to buy rush a pike and then send it out to the graveyard, I can redirect my troops. All right. So it looks like, no, in fact, the um, there's only one tier two spider there. And we have a pretty strong hero. This snow spirit is like at half HP, which means it would almost certainly survive this fight, but it's also getting higher and, and higher in terms of value, right? The, the first eight experience points or whatever, maybe we were guaranteed to, to lose one or two snow spirits, but the, the, the stronger this things get, the more uh, HP it has. And then whenever it gets to champion, it's going to evolve into a snow spirit. And so that means that like, as you get more and more experience on them, you need to be more careful with which fights you're taking them to, um, which means that we can't actually get four units into this fight unless we buy rush our pikemen. But by buy rushing the pikemen, we actually can get that into range which means now we can have four four units at this fight and still still allow our snow spirit to to heal it off and not you know potentially get thrown away in a an auto resolve and because we have the uh the frost weapons here this is one of the the other nice advantages of playing with cryomancy is like any anything that gives you uh, an elemental damage weapon um like evocation and pyromancy as well those are just really great for level two heroes in terms of their damage output just really really great because against any unit that has a uh, higher defense than resistance which is going to be most units other than support units then you're just doing more damage uh, unless you're, you know, specifically being resisted. Like they're not as good against the undead, but that's that's a problem for later. Here, I think probably we can get away with turning the mana off. There are going to be some fights where like you want to be able to use the mana no matter what. And this one, because we're the only unit that's been damaged and we have a support unit, I and we have a another um, a bird. I think this will probably be okay. I think this will be okay. It was. <laughs> we have three HP. It was okay, Walker. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, that's that's not great because it means that now our hero does need to take a little bit of time to uh, time to heal. Hmm. Well, that's okay. That 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 gives uh, the hero time to think about what it's done. Um, and the snow spirit time to think about where it's gonna go. But we made it through that fight and we got a bunch of mana. And that means that now I think we can have a pretty easy time summoning some more uh, snow spirits once this guy comes down. And because we did find a horn of plenty there, the tailor is probably only gonna need maybe one turn healing off. This is, if, if this were just a better, a better support unit, batter, bannerman, then uh, I think we could we could definitely do only one turn, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. In the meantime, um, if you see an infestation, this one's not going to matter as much because Haunted Graveyard is not like a particularly high level, so it doesn't have a huge area that it's controlling. But if you see an infestation, they uh, will spawn with like pickups and stuff inside their territory that are free to pick up um, that would normally have units guarding them. So you can go in there and find a large creature cage and get a like a level two unit really, really early on. And that can make a big deal whenever it comes to, you know, not almost dying. If we had died there, it would have, it would have been annoying because it would have delayed our snow spirit, but we don't have anything that we're casting right now. So like it kind of doesn't waste any, uh, any world map casting. So if you're, if you're going to die, do it early. Um, let's see. I think this 
this archer probably is going to end up exploring into the underground. So you want to, like, as I said, you just, you don't want to bring every single unit to every single fight, but you do want to typically try to have enough to prevent taking that much damage in a fight. Um, just so that way you don't have to do what we're about to do here, which is maybe even spend Imperium to grab a tile. So you have somewhere to heal that's closer to the front. That can't be good. That can't be good value. So generally, you you just like really do not want to be clicking attract population. Um, this what it does for you is it gives you food here in this little ticker. Um, that's okay I, on the surface, except that now you can just get a lot of food from other stuff, and that's uh, that's generally a lot more productive when it comes to sustainable growth. Let's see. Yeah, you go here. And then you'll have 30, 43 HP. Yeah, 43 HP is enough to fight a, a haunted graveyard. That's fine. So yeah, we had to take one turn off in order to heal. Or no, uh, and then we'll be level four after that fight, probably. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is a high level, uh, a high value hero. That's a Lost Queen's Crypt. Um, and it, it under the, uh, the earth out here, we're gonna find a Tier, a level one hero with like 15 levels of equipment that also has the whiteborn ability so that way it has a uh, lifesteal and the combination of all those things means that this hero is incredibly incredibly strong and getting it onto the field is going to be a huge upgrade in terms of our military so now whereas like we did have this path to go down here to pick up the fairy I think we do need to go now our new path needs to go pick up the lost queen's crypt then probably conquer Cri triway and then uh take the uh there it is take the the fairies because like that's that's just going to become a, a much more profitable path and that's the value of of scouting like being able to see stuff is pretty important so as we as we get this peasant pikeman closer and closer to leveling up it becomes a little better but don't don't beat yourself up if a gold rank peasant pikeman dies because you're gonna start being able to produce defenders sooner or later and then you're also gonna get to the point where you're gonna stop producing defenders sooner sooner or later it's it's really really handy when they level up but it's not something that should make you feel heartbroken when they die um i guess i guess everyone actually other than the hero can just go over here and then you can just like chill Okay, yeah, that's fine. Alright, so that peasant pikeman cannot get into range to fight. Oh, but they could if we do this. So, uh, in Age of Wonders 4, if you have a friendly tile, then you can actually move faster through your own friendly territory. Um, so now, that peasant pikeman can get into that fight. I think we're also going to go ahead and just replace this uh, farm with a quarry. Probably should have done that like last turn because I knew that we were going to be finishing the the uh, production. Um, oh, Walker, Walker, you colossal buffoon! You were supposed to be picking up a second farm so that way you could do a, a stonemason. All right. Well, you know what? The the people the people deserve better than this, but. Just so that way you don't have to reroll. We're, we are going to spend uh, influence or Imperium on that. But you don't really want to be doing that. Like, you'd much rather just be, like, being playing better. <laughs> you'd much rather just play better. <laughs> um, but anyway, we are going to we are gonna get a Stonemason down immediately. And the reason being is that this Stonemason is not producing 15 production per turn. It's producing 21 because of the, the Wonder Architects here and the... Uh, the good roll on our druidic terraformers and this is going to make this thing a lot faster in terms of paying itself off because it's going to finish and then we actually could immediately slingshot into town hall 2 into found and wizard tower foundation i think we need to build a library first but like getting getting this thing online is going to get us to pretty insane high levels of a uh, production yeah stone stone masons are not good usually but but here i think I think we're going to see, uh, fingers crossed, 
I think we're going to see that stonemasons are going to work it here because we are going to do that. And then we're immediately going to switch both of these into quarries. So we're not going to, we're not going to do stonemasons the slow way with like farms for the remainder of the game. Um, but now we've, we've set this up. We've acquired the boost. Our production cost won't go up um, when these switch out if it's being finished. So this will finish and then we'll immediately switch into do quarries, which means we'll immediately have two quarries, a forester, and a, a shatter skull uh, keep. So we have our academy right there. Um, and that's that's great. That's, that's fantastic. I love it. All right, so that's a clear space. That's a clear space. I guess in this case, can we put any units with our hero? Because you kind of want to have units with your hero when your hero's at lower HP, because it does, if your unit's like all, all by itself, it'll tend to run at the enemy <laughs> a lot, <laughs> like to the detriment of its own health. Um, I guess, I guess, you know, we can start it actually in here. We'll, let's go stand on this gold because we can build a, um, an outpost here on this gold mine after the fight. And that's, that's fine with me. I like that. Like, yes, we're not getting a lot of extra value in terms of uh, the extra income, because this is like 10 and it costs 10 to operate an outpost. But that's kind of not the point. The The main value there is that we get um, faster movement and somewhere to heal. Uh, and that is really important when it comes to early game fights. So here we're going, because because our, our ruler is, is dinged up, we are going to leave more units in this um, than, than we need, but we're not going to bring our sixth because there's just no value to that. And because these guys have um, frost resistance, we are not going to make mana available. I don't want the AI wasting it. No! All right, well, if we were gonna die, we were gonna do it early. Our ruler our ruler bit it in that fight. What a jerk, but at least it wasn't done when we had the snow spirit unlocked. I've done that where like your ruler dies and then you're missing out on like so many turns of, uh, of upgrades. Oh, oh no, but we died before we were able to, to set up um, Oh man, before we were able to set up our outpost. So that means we can't actually get the gold off of this. So now our army is kind of like stranded. We need something for it to do productively. But fortunately there's some stuff over here like um, a recruitment post, like this is a draft. So if we can get uh, Town Hall 2 down and start working on Bannermen, then that's a way for us to do uh, good economic development and like military development, even without our ruler. Cause we're gonna, we're not gonna have any way to do like res Oh, Walker, did, was there a, a useful weapon here that you could have had for that fight that might've kept you alive? Maybe, maybe, maybe you should use your scouts before you get into fights, Walker. That's, that's important. You should do that. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. Let's go here. All right. So the spring of youth does indeed exist. And this looks like really high quality land. So that's good. Like, I think this can make for a natural city one, two, and then three. And then I think that should be enough for us to, to fight like whatever the AI is doing over there. Let's see. Let's go get some mana. And then I guess we will, let's let it, let's go check out actually what the scout is finding under the mist. Cause we need to find the enemy like ASAP. So that way we know which direction they're coming from. Um, another gust keep. So the more of these like research post uh, SPI ones, the better, but it also like these kind of reduce the power of a research post SPI to pick up on, on your own in terms of your tomes. Cause you're getting kind of like a pseudo academy there. Um, I mean, we're not going to take this fight without our hero, because that looks like it should be actually really productive for EXP. Oh, but there's production down there, so we could use that to help uh, slingshot the stonemason. Yeah, all right, that's what we're doing. So we're going to grab another peasant pikeman. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to fight this iron deposit to get extra production to funnel into our uh, Town Hall 2 castle whenever this thing is done. Because the faster you can get onto producing something that isn't a like a 
dinky tier 1 unit, the better. And this Lost Queen's Crypt is going to get us a lot of value in terms of heroes pretty quickly. Let's see. Oh, there's another one? There's another one? Oh my god, we're gonna have so many Voodoo Mamas. This is crazy. No. I, I mean, I guess we, we have enough population growth that I'm not worried about losing them to uh, to sacrificing them here. So what this is going to do, it, assuming that it's not the one that requires you to fight it, which unfortunately there are some that require you to fight it. I can't tell the difference between them. They look the same to me. Um, but when you fight when you fight them, you, you still get good value. But when you don't have to fight them, you just sacrifice one population and then you get uh, like just a really, really great, really great hero really great hero all right let's go here um and we're we're gonna clump the units together as much as possible if they have to fight without a hero around because the more clumped they are the more supported they'll be uh in terms of the, their behaviors they will actually try to they'll try to help each other out if they're being flanked they won't always be successful but they will try oh you jerk you triway oh oh my god triway is just like all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna now we're gonna take this gold and i think we're gonna end up declaring war on triway we're gonna now now we're gonna take this this crypt first and then we'll declare on triway but that's that's it they took they took our production how dare they uh yeah yeah let's go here I have this, anybody else have this weird bug where like sometimes you just can't scroll around the uh, the map and you have to press escape in order to to get out of that, or is it just me? All right, so we have two quarries. We can pick up a second forester without it being harmful here, um, and we could use it actually as a way to link up to Triway, which that's fine with me. God damn it, Triway. We we were gonna we were gonna have we could we could have funneled the production into the town hall right now. So I guess we are gonna need to do the responsible thing and start working on a library next. Like you really cannot you cannot delay that stuff for, for too long. The only reason that we've been able to delay it as long as we have is that we started with Shatter Skull. But if we'd started with like one of the other ones that gets you like production or uh, food up front, then you like kinda get there all on your own. You get there naturally. All right, let's get uh, let's get some snow spirits down. Let's get some snow spirits down. That is going to be really huge for us, actually. Uh, if we can keep even one of them alive into the mid game, that would be great. Uh, after the first one, we need to like do an, an an economy check in this case because we are just flush with gold and mana because we were dead for a little bit. Um, we can go ahead and pick up Blizzard, and we're so flush on mana that I actually don't even hate just locking in blades. Most of the time, I find that locking spells at the beginning of the game is just not worth it because you don't have a whole lot of spells that you have to cycle through, and so the cost of doing it like once is the same, and so you're and you're unlikely to ever have to do it twice. Ice, but Frostblades and Blizzard are like a lot stronger than the other tools available to us in Tome of uh, Cryomancy for the things that we have right now. And so I want to make sure that I get both of those. And I, I think I want to do it in that order because Blades is going to be a lot stronger whenever we go into a uh, an Ancient Wonder to fight. And then Blizzard is going to be a lot stronger if we get to fight something on the overmap. Um, and because, because especially because we're going to be fighting against... Um, these guys with mammoth riders frost blades might actually be something we do not want to cast before we we take uh triway well we'll see we'll see that every every decision that you make in age of wonders for has consequences some of them are good some of them are bad and in this case the choice to ride on on mammoths is uh, and, and use a uh, time of cryomancy is a little dangerous um but I think it'll be okay because the worst thing that we that that can happen is that we decide that we need to use uh, harass defenders, and we have seven hundred and thirty gold right now. Like we can definitely use harass defenders. Uh, let's see. Let's go exploring. Let's go exploring. 
let's find some things. There's another there's another banner there. I like that. That's another really good way to, to scale up your heroes ASAP. We should get to level four. Once we're level four, then fighting that free city should not be a problem. Um, but in order to get to level four, you do have to get into a fight and not die. That is expert analysis, Walker. Thank you. Actually, Blizzard into a, a large monster den can be a really big deal in terms of getting value. All right, so we found the enemy AI. Where There you are. The AI has a an elite awakener and an elite sun priest already so we know that this guy is going to be playing high just based off of those units alone um it looks like it chose one of the non-generated rulers i thought i ticked on ruler generation but whatever this is this is i think one of the the best of the uh generic rulers like the pre-constructed in terms of its its value you get athletics which is just a really great trait whenever it comes to moving units around high which performs really well whenever you get access to extra stability it gets access to extra stability there's nothing else here pushing their um their alignment higher so they can just declare on a free city once and then they're into neutral then they're getting tons of extra production and then they also have great builders to utilize that tons of extra production so eric rex if you're like interested in doing something with with pre-constructed um i would very strongly consider as one of the stronger factions i i don't know if it's stronger than any of the the barbarians and industrious that i think we need to play out because like this doesn't really have defensive scaling like the only defensive scaling you have here is elusive and like a lot of the random dwarves and stuff have like tough and hardy and the, that is like ridiculous when it comes to the mid to late game scaling but this guy is pretty good pretty good all right stonemason is done yes we need a library we need that now we need we actually needed that like three turns ago i just didn't i just didn't build it because we were dead and when you're dead your research rate does not matter um that is that is that is true let's see oh 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 abort that one and grab this one instead this is a much better tile because we have ancient wonder or wonder architects so this is adjacent to the lost queen's crypt at the moment we do not currently have materium one which would be like the thing that we need in order to take um this as a as a tile but with wonder architects our our outposts can actually grab tile uh wonders all on their own so that means that this this assuming that this is one that'll let us knock on the door for one for one uh population which uh we are going to pay um assuming that we can do that then we've got our our hero down there Oh, there's another free city here under the earth. So at the edge of your fog of war, you'll occasionally just like see things underneath the 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 fog, and that is a, like a little checkered line, so that I know is a free city. It's not always a a friendly free city, but I do know that is a free city. And we actually might be growing our we'll see if we grow our population fast enough to do this but what i want to do is pretty soon after town hall 2 i want us to do a town hall 3 and the reason being is that your draft is sort of like it it's flexible it can go from one spot to a next to the next you don't want to be spending it building peasant pikemen um these things yes they do eventually evolve into defenders but they're really really bad in combat and then defenders are like okay but they're really not that good at damage output and unfortunately i do think we are going to need to take tome of warding it it is so much better for feudal um than not having it tell the difference based on the name of the province that has the ancient wonder um that's the lost queen's crypt i like the the art is the same the art is the same the name might be different i don't know walker do you ever read anything that you're clicking on no no you don't have to read it just feel it with vibes just feel it with vibes all right uh wow we are just gonna have so much gold that it's crazy so yeah i think as soon as we can build a town hall three there we will and then and then we might even need to build a an early blacksmith all right that looks like a sun shrine to me so i would bet you anything that that's their capital which means that this uh this large distance put them maybe like 
five or six turns away from our capital. So I think what we're going to want to do is probably institute a rule where we are only allowed to uh, siege their capital if we have 18 units coming in, just so that way we're like required to fight them if we if we want to do uh, like long term things like this on smaller maps. Because I I actually really do in, enjoy doing the, these like small weapon tests just to see what what is possible. Um, but if people want to do like a long big single player thing then we can do that too it just kind of depends on on what people want to do with with single player streams for now we are going to let this scout get completely devoured and uh you know in, in in pvp you could delete your hero or your unit there to deny people experience points but i think that's mostly unsportsmanlike so i don't do it <laughs> and i'm lazy so i'm also not gonna do that um but yeah now we're gonna work on the town hall too And are you, yes. All right, so we wanna make sure that we will recruit our hero here. And the way we can do that is if we go in and increase our hero cap, now we have a hero cap of two, which means that when we accept this character, instead of adding it to um, like our, our pool, which we would then have to recruit out from our, our uh, capital, we can now recruit immediately here we can recruit Moldy the Inspiring. And yes, Moldy the Inspiring is only level one, but I promise that is not a big deal. Because let's see what Moldy the Inspiring comes with. We have tier three, tier two, tier two, tier three, tier two, tier two. All right, cool. So we started with a uh, big dumb staff. Um, this is something that's like kind of annoying about the this hero that you can get but you can fix that pretty easily if you find a different weapon um some of the stabs are really really good but this one because it it provides like no value in terms of of us we are not going to be doing a lot of raising undead here i'd much much rather have uh moldy the inspiring just use a brutal great hammer and walker did you seriously your, your ruler died because you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't bother giving them a weapon and then when you got a weapon after you died and then you just didn't give your hero you're a monster walker you're an absolute monster why are you doing this yo what's up Winsaya? how's it going our uh, our our ruler got a was level three on turn one and is level three right now <laughs> that's it's it's uh yeah we got the free hero we're doing uh, like a 1v1 with a minor uh, disadvantage or a minor handicap against a, an AI with a major advantage um, just to see what we can get to work under those circumstances. And we're playing with um, Feudal because I think it'll be fun. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab that as a city and then probably immediately grab that as a city afterwards. So I think all the rest of our Imperium is probably going towards those, which means we're probably not going to be taking Fruitful in Integration. It's, it's unfortunate because it really does make your starting cities a lot better, but this is going to kind of start with an extra population anyway because of the Lost Queen's Crypt. Um, okay, so you go here. You go here. Now this thing does have an insta kill, which is pretty annoying. Um, and so like bringing evolutionary units into those circumstances is pretty dangerous. But unfortunately we, even with, with Blizzard, we're not strong enough to fight a large monster den right now. Uh, I think if both of those heroes were level four, uh, I think that it, it could be worth risking, but the way it stands right now, not worth it. But there is an Archon blood down here. It's not crazy far away. Oh, thank God. I, people need to see this, Winslaya. This is this is the real science. You've you've found the the secret hideous the hideous truth. Uh, and now the world has to know. I guess I guess we're. God, are we just gonna fight this and then immediately go here and then come back? Because here, here's a problem for us. So here's Archon Blood, and here's Astral Dew. So that means if we find Tranquility Pool anywhere, then we have Cosmoflux Elixir. Um, but 
the further that we keep going, oh, but if we just keep going east, then like once we're already here, then we could just go get the gust keep and then we're all the way over here and then we can go get the cursed barrows and then like 20 turns have gone and this the spring of youth is still just sitting here doing nothing watching us. But unfortunately, I think that that new path is is probably stronger because uh, over here, I don't see a, this might be Archon Blood here. That could be it. Does that look like Archon Blood to you? That looks like Archon Blood to me. So maybe that's okay. But like the the value you get out of an Ancient Wonder isn't just in clearing it, or isn't isn't just in, in occupying it, it's in clearing it. You get like this giant reward and the reward here is knowledge and the reward here is knowledge and the reward here is stability. This is dumb, or morale for your units. This is not good. Um, and because we're, we're specced to be able to fight uh, the winter fairies, and this is not the winter fairies, I think this is gonna be a harder fight than it needs to be in comparison to this. So yeah, all right. Sometimes the important decisions that you make in Age of Wonders 4 are like to stick to your plan. And sometimes it's to not stick to your plan. And I think in this case, not sticking to our plan is gonna be better. Let's go uh, Let's go get an Archon Blood. But considering that we're not gonna be coming back to Triway for a while, let's go conquer that first. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. And we'll grab those guys for the gold. And that's good, that's good. Yeah, we need to take this fight. All right, I guess you two get kicked out. Yeah, you two get kicked out. No, I think we can only bring four because I think we do need to get this guy up to, to level. We need to get this guy up to level four immediately. It's ridiculous. How are you still, why are you still here? Why are you still here? Yeah, I don't care as much about leveling up a, a defender if we're about if we're working on Town Hall 2 right now. I don't really care about growing a defender. We're about to be able to make a bunch of them. And I suppose that we take this fight with four, and then if we lose the Snow Spirit, because we, we might, um, then we can still turn it in. Oh my god. 278 production. But Town Hall 3... Do you, does Town Hall 3 require just five for for actually building it? Because if it does, then we legitimately might start building it here. Um, that requires three population to unlock. I think... God. Winslade, do you remember? Is it Does uh, Town Hall 3 unlock it? at five population. Because if it unlocks at five population, then we legitimately might conscript here and then just immediately start working on Town Hall, um, on Town Hall three. Because we have five population. All right, whatever, let's see. Let's try it for science. We have to, we have to click this once in order to get that. Uh, oh. We have it unlocked anyway. Maybe it's because we reached the requirements in terms of population once before. Whatever, I don't care. We're working on a Town Hall 3. We're gonna have a Town Hall 3 finished by turn 12. And then um, and then we can just make knights. And that'll be and that'll be awesome. It means we only produce one defender. <laughs> we're gonna build one defender. We're gonna build one defender and we're gonna build 40 knights. Uh, but that's that's good. That's good. That like this is a way for us to dramatically um, shape up our military at the very beginning of the game with feudal. If you end up with a whole bunch of extra gold like this, then like funneling it in to get your tier three units onto the board is actually pretty good. It 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 does depend also like on the size of the map. Um, obviously, in a larger map. Actually, we might not even build any defenders, because we might even want to just build a bannerman next and then build knights. Guacamole. Guacamole, Walker. This turn, it's been turn nine for like 20 minutes. People are going to unsubscribe. 
unsubscribe if it's been my turn for 20 minutes while I've been talking about guacamole. Um, I guess that's three, that's five. Uh, yeah, all right, you get out of here. I don't think these two are gonna participate in these fights. I think it's gonna be this crew, if that. Um, it might legitimately... Yeah, I guess Dusk Hunters do actually do really well against pole arms. So yeah, it's gonna be no pole arms. We're just gonna us and us and some supports and some uh, and some snow spirits, and we should get there. So yeah, let's go find our our free city. And you guys are all at full HP, so I don't see any reason you can't go there. Ooh, regenerating infestations for the win. All right. Are we gonna have enough mana or enough Imperium to do this into that? It sure looks like it, cause we're gonna need time to siege that city down anyway. Um, so, hmm, hmm. I don't think I don't think it makes sense for us to take uh, fruitful integration, even even here with this this current setup because we, we just like really can't afford the imperium even though it does dramatically speed up the early growth for your cities right, that is true three hundred and fifty two gold to finish our our town hall three <laughs> fucker if you buy rush that people are gonna make fun of you um let's go here let's go here Is this, is this enough front line? So right now, our front line is actually like a lot better than their front line. Um, we have, oh, oh rad, we have a, we have a power attack. All right, yeah, this, this should be a pretty, this should, should be a pretty easy cleanup with no losses, Walker. He says with confidence and then loses half of his army. But we are we have so much mana that I'm gonna leave mana on. Like these are these are kind of important, and if we can avoid them dying, then I would like to. Great, we avoided them dying, um, and now they can go get some hit points, and we can bring in the uh, the very super important and well-respected peasants who are totally a critical part of our military infrastructure. You guys are really, really doing uh, doing your part around here. Let's see. I don't think we want this this spear with absolutely no experience points. This on, this one, honestly, we might end up just like deleting later. We'll we'll see. Um, they're they're gonna be more useful here in this like team fight scenario because they are going to. Um, we, we, we might get into a fight with 16 units against 14 at one point. That's really what it boils down to. Uh, and I guess these guys are a bunch of hunter spiders. So here I, I'm okay bringing another unit in because um, these pikemen, A, they might die, in which case they save us the opportunity of disbanding them. Um, but B, like hunter spiders are actually dangerous. So this is gonna be another fun little fight for us to watch. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do a manual combat and turn on the AI again. So that way we can see um, that I almost certainly forgot to click cold weapons on the hero, didn't I? So that way we can see that I forgot to do I forgot to do my job. That's okay. We've got we've got restore. Uh, so yeah, the AI will use that. That's that's like one of the things that really is heartbreaking about about the uh, the bannerman is that like having access to an, an AOE ability is really cool and it does use warding really well. But in terms of like everything else about the comp the, their combat stats, they do have some problems. All right, so let's see. The AI decides that strengthening their peasants was the right thing to do, and then moving them in. All right, all right, I see what you're doing. Okay, here at least we are gonna get uh, some models reduced out of the enemy uh, at the beginning of a fight, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and because we have double power weapons here, we're able to remove the uh, retaliation attacks from the enemies. And that means that of course, that they're also not going to have the ability to do um, 
uh, uh, pr provoked opportunity attacks. Now, why? Oh, this guy couldn't move because it was immobilized. Um, but that's okay because it looks like it looks like all that extra damage was just going in on the bird that came along with our ruler, and that's one of the advantages for Crowmaster's bow. Like just having extra units to throw at the idiots is it's pretty good. And now, because this is the only the only hunter spider left, these guys are going to come in and do the damage. So yeah, I think we're going to get out of this fight, and then hopefully this is level four on this on this hero. Please get level four. We need level four on our ruler. It's so good. Yes. All right. So level four is going to be great for us for a couple of reasons. First, of course, we do get. A signature skill that's gonna be an opportunity for us to talk about different signature skills I think that'll be fun um, let's see nothing else in terms of equipment let's see what we got okay uh, so here you might be inclined to think that if we had seen like a summon elemental that we would just like slam summon elemental because we're playing around with elemental stuff because we're playing on like druidic terraformers but in reality, if you're playing with elemental things, um, like especially if you're playing with cryomancy, then you actually need to debate whether or not you're gonna get good value out of summon elemental. It's, it's going to create an opportunity for you to accidentally summon something that deals burning, and burning and, uh, and frozen are incredibly bad together, like a huge, huge non-bow. And so you wanna try to avoid those things if you can. Um, sometimes you have to take summon elemental anyway, so that way you get like the materium affinity because anything you take here is going to impact your empire affinity and therefore the things that are available to you both in terms of your tomes as well as in terms of your empire development tree but here we're going to take mana unchained uh, mana unchained i think is first just a fantastic ability for auto resolves and uh, manuals um, in auto resolves the ai is very very good at utilizing buffs and heals one of the other really, really strong, often unsung things when it comes to signature skills is mass rejuvenation, which it like basically sets all of your units close to full HP before every single fight. Um, and so mana unchained isn't quite as powerful on that on that side. It doesn't just like top everybody off in terms of HP, but this does give all of your units star blades, which is gigantic when it comes to increasing your damage output in the early game and even doesn't like drop off in the mid to late game and importantly this is going to give us our first astral affinity so astral 2 which is like this really important part of the the tree right here uh, adaptive research it's now only minus 25 percent gold in production instead of minus 50 percent but it's still a very powerful ability and something you should prioritize getting most of the time um, and if, if you can, if you can fit it in a build, I think you should. And getting a little more astral early on here is a good way to set us down that road. Um, let's see. We could build an outpost here, actually. So that way we have, uh, scaffolding to heal on before we attack Triway. Because some, some of these units... Without mass rejuvenation, some of those units are not looking too spicy. We are going to take frost weapons for our, our uh, secondary hero, though. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to need to set up a an outpost somewhere, and this is bordering on their territory. So that's okay with me. It's okay with me. All right. Um... We could take Undying Loyalty just to see how the AI works with it. Um, we're going to want to pick this up before we do any manual battles with the enemy, if that's what we want to do towards the end. But in previous patches, this this pick has effectively done nothing because the AI just did not really know how to use it uh, and would just use it on full HP units that were not in threat of being attacked ever. Um, so it could it could be a lot better in the new patch and I just haven't tried it out yet, but we'll do that. We'll do that in the future. We'll, 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 we'll do it live. All right, for the meantime, I am gonna pick up, oh, oh, I'm gonna pick up a research post here. And now if we have another mount Dang it, we don't have another mount. If we had another mount, we could have just like mounted our hero, run it back there to heal for one turn, and then it'd be good to go. But critically, this means that now everybody can heal um, productively next turn. 
and then the turn after that attack try away. So that means we actually don't even need this outpost anymore. Um, yeah, we don't even need that outpost anymore because that was that was purely for healing and, and uh, movement infrastructure. And I think we're getting that here with our population growth. All right, one more turn until we finish our Town Hall 3. Uh, that means that for 160 gold, we could build it, and then we could... Oh, we don't have draft yet, because our draft is still turned off from the event. All right, well, there's no point in, in by rushing it then. We're going to we're gonna literally skip all of our, our uh, Tier 2 units here. <laughs> so silly. All right, well, that's fine. We'll do a little bit of exploring down there. Yeah, if you could craft mounts, I would be pretty happy with that. Like, maybe give it, like, some requirements. Like, you have to have um, Tome of Beasts in order to craft animal mounts and, like, Tome of Artificing in order to craft basic golem mounts and Tome of something else to craft something else. I, I think there's a way to do it, and and I think I think it would be good. That that would be that would be a nice improvement, but it also means that like the if you did that, then the the mount traits wouldn't be as good. I don't think that they're like oppressively powerful in the universe where people are taking tough, resistant, and hardy all three together every single time. Um, okay, so here's a, actually a really interesting fight. There's a support unit and two dread spider hatchlings so this is like really effectively four uh units that we'd be able to fight against uh but you know as long as we have one hero who's level four that's enough walker did you seriously not cast a anything last turn did you have the ability to cast blizzard and not cast it you are lazy you're lazy. I think you know that. All right, cast the blizzard. Okay, so there's an ice spider. This is a great opportunity to slingshot levels, but because it's right next to the large monster den, I don't think there's any reason to do that until we're ready to fight the monster den, which I think we're going to be able to do after we do triway and then this stuff. Um, by then we should be especially if we need to level up we can do a level up there and then we can go do the monster den in the ride for vengeance because ride for vengeance is a quest that's being assigned to us by our extra hero but it's associated with a hero if that hero dies then you know we we lose out on the quest uh opportunity but if we succeed then the hero who assigned us that quest is going to gain a level so that means that you can like you know use it as a, a banner and and slingshot your own levels and get get where you need to go pretty quickly hopefully uh hopefully you get to level four faster than this because you don't die let's see let's find let's find the enemy army also so we can keep an eye on them oh oh sure all right so we have a, a rally of leeches and we can take a corrupt soul which we like yes we don't have oh Oh, we actually do have some undead synergy because we have that uh, the undead staff. That's interesting. Um, we're not going to bother building Brewer Ogre because I think we're going to get enough. Uh, maybe one Brewer. Nah. Eh, 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 eh. Chat, do you guys want me to recruit a Brewer Ogre or not? We're definitely recruiting a Corrupt Soul here. So Corrupt Soul, tier three, even without anything else that's like actively supporting it, I don't really care. We have much more than enough gold to bring another unit in. And this is a, a pretty solid, like just frontline fighter type thing. A Brewer Ogre is a little different in that it does give you access to another way to um, freeze people through Frigid Belch, which interacts re really favorably with Blizzard. But it also means that like this is an effect that we are going to have a lot of already uh, if we can get enough of our snow spirits to stick. And even if we can't, we, we're going to have some snow stuff going on. So like I don't feel like we necessarily need this in order to get good value here, but it is cheap. You want to you want to see it? All right, let's get it. Like, I think I think it doesn't really cost us a lot and it and it makes available some interesting things. Knights are still blocked. How long are we blocked on on this stuff? All right. Well, we'll make a blacksmith so that way we start recovering on our draft resource sharing. 
one more turn one more turn all right i'm gonna start working on that on that night and then hopefully between the blacksmith coming out um and this being done super early we can make like three plus nights in the next nine turns that's kind of where i want to be because the knights are the knights are very very good if it comes to fighting enemy uh enemy people early yeah you, you know right it is an ogre like i don't know why we were hemming and hawing about this like how are you gonna how are you not gonna the ogre is willing to fight for you let them let them if you don't let the ogres fight they're gonna burn down your city just let them fight all right uh let's make another snow spirit and that's okay and that's okay all right let's go here and then the big the big boost of course for us is going to be when we um get that second that third city actually uh up and going this this third city that we're about to conquer and i think we actually have enough imperium that we're going to be able to take knowledge extraction here because we should uh, have 220 now, and then we're getting 50 Imperium per turn after that, which means that after two turns of sieges, we'll have 320, and we need 200 to absorb. So let's uh, let's take knowledge ex extraction. Let's take knowledge extraction, everybody. Get creative. Oh. Oh. Do we also have time to do fruitful integration? I So if you... If you're doing your hand waving whenever it comes to to fruitful integration, you're like, all right, the city while you're absorbing it, it's it's not really growing for you, and you're not able to build stuff. Oh my God, Walker, it's turn twelve, and you haven't even put your whispering stone in your capital. This this should have stability thirty by now. I'm never gonna financially recover from this. Um, but yeah, that's that at the beginning of the game. Just put your, on turn one, just just drop your stone. Just put your stone in your capital. And then when you find a free city later and you like are trying to decide whether or not you want to put your Whispering Stone there, most of the time the answer is no. Most of the time the answer is you just want to conquer them. But if, if it's something that you're having like an agonizing fight with your, yourself about, you can like deal with it once you get to that point. But just like leaving it in the side, it like in the sideboard in case you find a free city is not worth it, because some you usually don't. And then having like thirty extra stability here would be like ten extra production per turn, um, which that's that's not nothing. That is not nothing. Uh, but here we will have enough to uh, absorb this. And we are fighting against one support and three archers. We're we have to conquer this city just so that way the other people can't. One support and three archers. All right, we're not even going to use the um, the blizzard on these guys. I think harassed defenders alone is going to like basically wipe these guys all on their own. Par partially because bannermen are bad. Um, at least until you get Tome of Warding. Uh, but we will we will get that for ourselves in just a moment. I guess, let's see, how far out do you reinforce? You reinforce out to there. Reinforce out to here. We need to get experienced leaders so these snow spirits can evolve instead of just taking up space on my driveway. And because these guys don't have any, they have no front line. They have absolutely no front line. So we can even cast frost blades and it actually just increases our damage. All right. Um, so we're not going to take a uh, white witch. Like I, I think this is cute. Uh, and in a, like a, team 1v1 scenario you can get value out of it but i think you still just get more value out of stuff like yeah frost arrows knight of signet uh signet of knighthood hold the line all three of these are, are things that i think are higher priority right now we don't have a lot in terms of archers but i i like getting this extra value on our our um our skirmishers like on the snow spirits themselves the extra damage there is good and we are gonna pick up uh glade runners whenever we get there i just i want to use them i think they're fun um, and because we have mammoths, I think they'll be pretty durable. We'll see if the, if the 
extra res cold resistance actually matters at all against the enemy. Um, it's it's always useful in the beginning of the game in terms of your ability to creep, but whether or not cold resistance is useful against the enemy in particular depends a lot on like what their build looks like, and high is not normally known for doing a lot that deals cold damage, um, but we'll see. We'll, we will see. We'll see. Okay. Abbey Vale, Helden. All right, so our, our units are down and hot off the presses. This means that we can probably just like not bring any of our really low EXP snow spirits because they'll probably just die and I'd rather save the mana. Uh, Abbey Vale is finished though and we can build a workshop here. So most of the time, whenever you get a new city, I think you do want to start with a workshop, pick up a farm, and then immediately switch it into a forester. But we are we are trying something a little different here. Walker, did you really turn this into a city without confirming that this is going to get multipliers for both food and production? I mean, I just kind of assumed it would because it looks like it should. Um, but it does and that those are the only ones that really matter like if we made that the capital it still wouldn't have gotten the mana so yeah th there wasn't really a better place for Abbey Vale to go that's okay that's this is good enough um, we will make I think one more peasant pikeman there just for a little bit of extra extra value and let's see where are we internally on this city we have two foresters two uh, uh and two so we we should probably just focus down all of our research like right now um i think we're fine on imperi well this only takes one turn walker it only takes one turn all right we'll build one and then we'll go into the arcane institute and then into the academy so we'll have our academy done by like turn 19 or whatever that's that's fine like i you can get it done a lot faster than that but I think if it if if you do it faster and it costs you too much, then it then it you start hitting diminishing returns. And now we are working at 65 draft per turn, so we can make a, a knight every four turns. So yeah, we'll have two knights by like turn nine. Actually, maybe we'll have maybe we'll have one extra right now, because if we built the knight this turn. That it would actually have enough uh, speed to get into Triway, but 260 gold is a lot, so nah. Walker, why do you discuss these things out loud? Well, well, Walker, I discuss these things out loud so that way people can can know that there are there are different ways to think about the same problem in, in Age of Wonders 4. There's lots of ways to think about the same problem in, in Age of Wonders 4. I think I think in this case, 260 gold is just a little much. There's a banner and a great bird nest. Ev distractions everywhere, everybody. There's a dis there's. A Listen, if they didn't want me to be like this, then they wouldn't put all these shiny things in front of me. We'll we'll, we'll go where the wind takes us. That's where we'll go. Um, pay for faster doot. Pay for faster doot. Zero, I I gotta tell you, I I do you, do you mean like um rush by the tower here? I think that's pretty reasonable. Um I don't think you would wanna rush by this knight here though, even after like discussing it, because I, A, I don't think this fight is gonna be very difficult. Um I think we're we got the breach here. We also have like maybe even a brewer ogre that we don't even bring to the fight because we don't probably need it so we have like a corrupt soul we have a hero and another hero oh the the rally now nah, we're not gonna we're not gonna muster the rally here at 150 
I think if we had taken, so Spring of Youth, if you start with uh, Wonder Architects and you um, start with a Spring of Youth near you, then you should actually probably shave some time off of this because being able to get like a, a especially a Winter Fairy or an Autumn Fairy down very early with, with basically any army is just an enormous upgrade in terms of your damage output. Um, they're, they're really, really good early on. They're sort of like what Mage Heroes wishes they were. Um, and and they they can be very terrifying um but if you don't literally get the the fairies then i don't i don't think you should be rushing um the rally very often like i i outside of that most of the rally stuff that you get is fine whenever you get it i don't think we're going to build an outpost here without materium one i think that might be what our uh next our next imperium expenditure is after annexing triway actually materium one is a really big deal and we we do need it we do need it hmm hmm, hmm. i guess i guess we'll just scout i want to get a little bit of vision and i don't think we need every single um, snow spirit that is not going to be involved in this fight, just standing around the outside of the city. All right, so you go here, you go here. Do we want to bring, do we want to bring the snow spirits? So we're definitely going to bring this guy and this guy. That's these four these five units are all definitely going in. And that means that the value of experience points coming out is pretty low. Um, and so those guys are not very likely to get a lot of, they'll get like three or four experience points each. And if they die, they'll lose 21. So, and those I care about evolving. So I'm going to leave those there. I'm going to bring the peasant pikemen. Um, Cause if this one dies, I don't, that one I don't care about dying. Uh, if we don't get a defender, we don't get a defender. And I, I don't think we're going to use the blizzard on this fight. I think we're going to save the blizzard, um, pro probably for the great bird nest, honestly, because those a phoenix, a phoenix, and a lesser storm spirit. If you use a blizzard on a lesser storm spirit, you're you're not really fighting an enemy anymore. That unit is mostly dead. All right, I think this is fine. I think we can take the fight here with this stuff. But let's uh, let's watch it. Let's see this. Let's see this manual combat, and then take it over to AI and see how they how they handle when we give them all of the resources in the world. You got all the resources in the world, kid. I think one thing that we do have kind of against us here is that we don't have like an infinite number of units clumped in the front. Um, the more units you have immediately outside the gates, generally the better the AI performs. So hopefully our our AI here doesn't just like YOLO and rush the units in. He says, and then holds his breath, and then YOLO, rush the units in. But we do have uh, that blinding crow, and that we have um, a man of my, the star blades. So hopefully, hopefully the the corrupted soul doesn't just like kill itself before everybody else shows up. Please, corrupted soul, you're a tier three. You cost us a hundred and a uh, hundred and five ma uh, gold. Don't do this. Frozen one. All right. That's that's the beginning. So now uh, our support, our our reinforcements are coming slowly around, but they are gonna come around. Oh my God! Just run, run! You did what you needed to do. Good. How? What was that? What was that move, AI? You walked up to them with a, a charge weapon and clicked defend in front of another charge weapon that can remove your defense mode? Oh, AI. Oh, you, this is shameful. The tactical AI is so good. <laughs> the, the, the tactical AI is so good. Oh, I can't believe it. I think we're gonna die in this fight. Because the, uh, the, the AI just, like, did ran entirely random nonsense here.
you need to you need to you need to get the tactical AI to understand pathing also like a little bit better than this because it's just like randomly doing like absurd nonsense. Can you do it? Can you do it? Level two hero. I mean, you do have you do have Whiteborn, so like it is gonna heal a lot. Um, but the fact that our corrupted souls just like walked straight up the gullet and and just got our like just torn apart by ranged fire is is gonna be a big deal. No, you have to kill the units. Just kill them. Stop letting them get bolstered defense. I think everyone is gonna die in this fight except for Moldy the Inspiring. I think that's I think that's the the plan. I mean, I guess we could have brought the ogre, and like ultimately the corrupted soul is gonna run away from the fight, and so I don't think we're gonna lose that. Um, and I do think that Moldy is gonna one v one this guy pretty easily. Yep, there he goes. Um, and so we really only lost the the ruler for a little bit of research, um, which is annoying because this is now the second time that it's died. But the uh, the corrupt soul should make it because it's retreating from a victorious fight, and then the hero made it, and the bannerman made it. So really, we traded a little bit of research later for a little bit of research now. So we're gonna take warding. Um, we do desperately need more survivability on our on our uh, bannerman. Um, and I guess we we need a lot of extra. Yeah, we need a lot of extra uh, magical defenses against stuff like this, just so that we can keep these guys. Stop dying! Stop dying! You guys, you guys are futile. You're embarrassing. But this is this is definitely a futile problem. Like the quality of their units is so low that they that their heroes have to do a lot of a lot of lifting, and then the heroes themselves, unfortunately, are in the same place where like they have to spend at least one level up on doing something that's just like an economy pick and the combination of those things is really rough um but you know what if we if we die twice in the early game and still manage to win this because i think we will then i'm gonna feel pretty good about that i'm gonna feel pretty good about that let's see oh we have the ability to take a new lord Wait, what happens if you take the Lord of Crops when your ruler is the Lord of Crops? This seems like a bug, but um, you know, I'm gonna try it and then we'll see what happens to our our, uh, our Lord. Cause if, our, if both of our cities can get the Lord of Crops going, then that, that would be pretty nice. That would be pretty nice. I wouldn't mind having a second city where we could make uh, our, our knights. We have a level four hero here. We could try, if we had a bunch of mana, we could try to save it up to, to get that guy on the field. But given that we don't have tons and tons of mana, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, frost arrows. Let's see. I guess I guess we'll keep exploring this direction because we we know where their their capital is it's like almost certainly right here because that's their sun shrine um, but I think just being able to see the rest of the board like if there are any important uh, ancient wonders for us to to pick up will be really helpful and similarly I want to see what's near this this silver over here it looks like there's an infestation over there all right Let's see. That that fight also could have potentially been uh, a lot easier if we'd put all of the units on the, the force that was attacking the front first. But it's hard to know because the AI is really, really unpredictable when it comes to how it does stupid stuff in, in uh, tactical combat. 
there's no oh there is mana there all right so there's mana here we could we could definitely use banking some mana at this point um because we are going to be picking up more mana cost pretty significantly soon um and this is i think that's a fine opportunity to get moldy the inspiring doing stuff chaos eater instead of brutal great hammer so this is 12 non-physical and this is almost entirely non-physical and this gives us an elemental slayer uh what is this ignores status resistance so this is a really high chance of doing slowed but i don't really care about that whereas this this looks like it does a lot of damage we killed we killed that stupid ruler and we took their we took their sword that's what we did and it only cost us our our hero taking a second visit to the uh the realm of eternity or whatever does anybody here know like a lot about the uh the lore for age of wonders 4 Uh, yeah, here we can definitely just rush that and then pick up the academy. Uh, and yes, we are not doing any research right now for the next two turns, but we want to just get the academy through ASAP. And on that note, I am going to rush our first night out. So it's turn 15. We've been dead twice, but now we have our first, uh, our first night. And as those roll out, um, things are going to get pretty spooky pretty quickly for eric over here if we get like four of those at reasonable uh level up it's gonna be pretty hard for for eric to survive the early game the power of the knights are coming all right there we go abbey vale we already have a research post so i'm gonna go ahead and try to pick up uh you as mana as a farm initially, so that way we get the boost on the workshop, and that's gonna reduce, of course, the cost there. And then we'll go in here and we'll switch this over to a quarry, and then we'll pick that up as a quarry, and then we'll pick that up as a forester, and when we pick that as a forester, we'll switch that over to, oh, we, actually, that can remain a quarry for a little while, because there's a research post there. Well, that gives us some flexibility. I like that. Let's see. 32. All right, that corrupted soul has to go heal. You, you, you guys, you guys could have done better than that. I know you could have done better than that. Thinking you can just die. You think you have permission to die? Let's see. Yeah, let's go get that mana with these guys and see who is over here. Oh, right, this is the wild speaker and the two uh, dread spider hashlings. That's actually fine, because that means that this guy could get level four pretty quickly with those two fights. Or just these two fights. That's probably better. Yeah, and we're going to have just enough uh, Imperium so that next turn. Oh! Oh! We're close enough that we can do that fight this turn on the mana node. Yeah, all right, I'm here for it. Like, I, this is probably, I mean, this would definitely be fine without the uh, the stipulation of, of minor disadvantage, but I, I suspect this is probably still fine because we have Whiteborn and Zeal and, um, a random peasant pikeman to throw it at stuff. I this is this is probably all right. Okay, well we didn't lose the hero. That was the important thing. Losing the uh, the snow spirit is annoying, and this is this is where the uh, the problem of not being able to actually use steadfast in in auto resolves definitely is is costing this this build a lot. But look, I just I suspect it doesn't do anything because it historically has not. Historically, you you give your ruler access to Steadfast, and then it'll use it on a random unit at 95 HP, and that's the way it goes. All right, we need this peasant pikeman to come back and help uh, fight this bird nest, because that is going to need to come down the moment that we can. Hmm. All right, we'll send we'll send. Uh, 
we'll send this guy back. Well, I don't know. Like, we kind of don't want to bring... Oh, I don't know. You you kind of don't want to bring Snow Spirits against a uh, Phoenix, but you kind of do want to bring Snow Spirits against a Phoenix. They're, like, really glassy against Phoenixes, but they also are really glassy against Phoenixes, so they do do a lot of damage. And if we can get Frostblades and Blizzard down, then maybe there's an opportunity there. And this... All right, so this could be an outpost. We're gonna get we're gonna get enough Imperium next turn that we can take engineering and then turn that into a place to heal, and maybe this into a place to get money from. Yeah, that looks reasonable. We're gonna get the the bad wolf uh, experience. Wolven Berserkers, but it's a Fury. So a Wolven Berserker, these are athletics, so they do at least have 40 movement speed on the the Fury. Um, I mean, we've lost a lot of low tier units already. And this, I guess if we could get the, um, the, do we have arrows? Did we take frost arrows? We did take frost arrows. Yeah, with frost arrows, uh, one one fury early on is actually gonna be pretty nice. So that that gives me hope that we can push through that that phoenix. Let's go see what we got going on. I think that'll work. Sometimes it's about like just flexing into whatever whatever you've got left, and in this case, these are the pieces that we have left. Oh, feudal! Oh, feudal! But as soon as we can get this this stupid stupid knight into this fight, we can that we can get it this turn. All right. Um, I guess we're gonna take that snow spirit out and leave the ogre in because this has uh, like charge strikes. Charge strikes are generally really dangerous at exploiting uh, like multi unit models like like snow spirits. They're really, really good at, at just grinding down their, your damage output. And so knowing, like, okay, and then in that case, we probably want to bring a, a Brewer Ogre to provide some some good value. We want to build outposts. Um, no, so you, you want to build outposts wherever you can. In this case, we're going to come back to grab, we can get that, that like, way, way, way later. Because the thing is that, like, you, you get mana from exploiting them. Like, you if you think exclusively in terms of what, what you can do with a city in, like, 30 turns, and, like, not using it optimally until those 30 turns, then you're way behind. Like, you, you want to build outposts where they get whatever resources they get. Because you need to build outposts basically everywhere. Uh, all right, I think this is probably going to be enough out of Moldy... I mean, it gives us two power attackers. I don't like the fact that we don't have a shield here, but we haven't evolved a defender yet, and I'm just like, I do not think that this that that pikeman is gonna get there. And all the other ones are dead. So yeah, all right, this is the fight. This is it. Uh, go on in. Show me what you got. Oh, you guys, stop getting the the stupid snow spirits killed. Stop it. Stop doing that. All right. Um, let's go here. And we did manage to get to level four on Moldy. So that's a big deal. Mass rejuvenation. That is enormous. All right. So now we have basically, doesn't matter that Banner is is like poo-poo. Uh, we are going to get plenty of healing out of Moldy. All she needs to do is click Mass Rejuvenation. And then all of a sudden your army is in great shape. This is dangerous, actually, because, like, I really want to click fighting for that gigantic, gigantic increase in damage. That's f plus five damage for fighting one. All right. I'm going to do plus five damage for fighting one. I I don't... If... Moldy has... Moldy has lifesteal. That's basically the same thing. That's good enough. Uh, let's get library now. Are we going to... That's a quarry. So I guess if we take a library, we'll take um, 
that as a forester, and we have enough mana or enough money to to like overspend on a couple of research productions once. That's okay. Um, you go here. I'm 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 really curious to see what happens to our ruler when they come back because we're gonna have two rulers with Lord of Crops. Hopefully, it doesn't just like take turn it off of Abbey Vale. But this has Lord of Crops plus 25. And this is Governor Bonus times two. So there that also says Lord of Crops. So this this says that because our ruler has died multiple times, we are allowed to take Lord of Crops as many times as we want. So that way we can grow as, as big and as powerful as we need. Yeah, you go here, you go. Um, I guess Ragash is potentially stonable. Like, this is this is a big enough city on kind of like the other side of the world, and we have another city that we want to put right here. So we could potentially just vassalize those guys, and honestly, a little bit of extra stability is not going to make a big difference in that city. Our stability is going to be much better once we're not dead. Um, I think that's fine. Yeah, let's go. Alright, 194 gold to buy out that knight. I think we'll buy out that knight next turn. I think that's fine. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see. If we fight the banner first, are we going to be able to... So if we can fight the banner and get the, uh, the level up off of that before fighting the, the Great Bird Nest and come in at level 6 instead of level 4... That'll be a really big upgrade because we're really kind of, again, only at level three instead of level four because we were minus one level for the uh, Lord of Crops. I think I think this is fine. I think we'll go down here. We'll help them clear out this stuff and then grab the Great Bird Nest. And that means that like those things that are kind of right here right now, maybe we save? No, no, we want to we want to we want to get value. We want to get value. Yeah, yeah, we need to get value. That's being absorbed in one turn. Okay. You go here. Oh, we can get down our frost blades. And considering that we do actually have a fury, we do not want to just sit on um, two unit enchantments like using our, our spaces. And we have a blizzard queued up as well. I would be casting more um, Snow Spirits here, except that we don't have anyone with Experience Leader just yet, and so we kind of don't get as much out of getting them down as early, as quickly as possible. And we'll do you as a Forester. Ooh, all right, there's a Haste Berry. And here's actually a really nice space for a tome, or for a School of Cryomancy, honestly. So yeah, Abbey Vale, it's a little cramp on space over here, and we're going to need to help it out by removing that large monster den. But for now, it looks like a pretty reasonable uh, second city to turn on. How close can you get? Can you get two turns to get within combat range? Bro, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? you for real though see how many turns would it take us to walk to cursed barrows it takes us three turns to walk to cursed barrows at which point the hero cap will cost three less so we could get our third hero by just walking into cursed barrows which would absorb a population off of triway you know we're gonna have the we're gonna have the imperium um to click rush on hero and getting the third hero down now uh is gonna help us scale up a little bit better later on so yeah i actually think that's fine it'll it'll help us catch up on hero levels considering that our ruler has been dead twice already 
Sometimes, sometimes you don't die as often, but I find that it for feudal they just like their their units are just so bad, um, and their early game combat so rough that your your heroes and your ruler just do die off more often than they do normally. Um, let's see, peasant pikeman two. I think that's fine. I think that's I think that's where we want to be. Scorheim has sent a war party from where? Am I at war with a free city under the earth that I forgot about? That sounds about right. Yep, that's exactly it. That's great, Walker. You identified the source of your own problem. Now all you need to do is not forget that you're at war with these people and uh, profit from it. But now with Frost Arrows, that, that Fury is a much, much scarier unit. Um, Frost Arrows, of course, uh, gives you the opportunity to apply slowed. Uh, but moreover, just the ability to deal that extra damage channel means that now we're, we have something that deals super effective damage against the Storm Spirit as well as the Phoenix. The Storm Spirit, less of a big deal because of the Wind Barrier, but, you know, having any any extra damage is, is definitely worth it in my book. Uh, you are an easy fight that we should take. You are an easy fight that we should take. Can we do that next turn and still have enough turn? We went to like, go grab the cursed barrows. Maybe not. Let's see. Actually, do we have another another mount? We don't have another mount. Damn it, Moldy! Give me a mount. Somebody, somebody, find me a horse. Not my kingdom for a horse, because like you know, this is my kingdom and get your own. But like some 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 portion of my kingdom for a horse. I'll offer you a reasonable deal for your horse. All right, so we've conquered our new city. Uh, let's see actually what Triway can switch into. Um, quarries with a farm. All right, what what are your bonuses here? Ooh, uh oh, so the capital, as you can see, does not get the bonus on its uh, production. This one, we do have Druidic Terraformers, but we do not have that. Um, yeah, all right, so this one, this is, Triway is unfortunately a pretty low quality city using Druidic Terraformers. And that's something where like, you can kind of get around that by like blowing up cities as you conquer things, but you don't need to do that in order to get value in the game. It's just a way to do it. I think, I think here, do we have a, a stonemason built in the city yet? Nah, all right. The The stonemason play is still on the board for the city, um, but we're gonna need an extra population, I think, to make uh, building libraries here make sense anyway, because we have to take this. This is our forester, or swap the, the conduit here into a forester. That's probably safer. Yeah, let's just do that. All right, so yeah, let's do that, and then let's take this as a research post. And yes, that is under the the purview of the Great Bird Nest, but yeah, we, we're we're gonna take care of that in just a second here. All right, let's let's buy rush these things. So in this case, we're spending like twenty six gold for twenty um, research because it just gets that thing down and down and out. Um, oh, this might be an opportunity for us to like really start pushing it on the food side or to keep pushing it on Imperium. Some of the Imperium expenditures have kind of like gone out the door. Oh, let's let's get a storehouse done. We do wanna, all right. Governor bonus in held on. It doesn't look like now, now it looks like we don't get the uh, Lord of Produce. Oh, but it refunded the le it refunded the level. It refunded the level. All right. Well, that's interesting. Um, now this seems like an abusable bug. If you get your ruler killed, then you can switch out of being in the Lord of Food by picking it up on a different a different hero. I'm gonna call that unintended. I, I we're gonna try to not abuse that, but maybe that is maybe that's what you're supposed to do here. I don't know. 
Maybe that is what you're supposed to do. All right. Well, we're gonna get. We're gonna get a. Uh... Oh, did we already get Walker? Does this city already have a stonemason? No, it doesn't. There it is. All right. We're gonna get stonemasons down in all our cities. That's that's what we're gonna do. Whether or not whether or not it's it's optimal on a city where you're not getting the extra bonuses is like kind of debatable. Um, and this one does not appear to have an ancient wonder anywhere nearby, and it doesn't get the bonus in its city city center itself. So this one's a little more questionable, or just or just flat out outrageous. Maybe we're not going to build it in the city. Maybe that's maybe that's what we're going to do. Maybe we're just not going to build it in the city. Um, but we're definitely going to build a bannerman. We're absolutely going to build a bannerman. We need we need to get. We get we started getting those out like four turns ago. Uh, we got another knight. We got magical wards online. We'll take stabs of warding. That is that is oh, going to be a really big upgrade for our, our fighting capability against high because um, the the magical wards don't actually apply against spirit damage, but bolstered resistance does. Bolstered resistance is gonna is gonna help us save a lot of a lot of HP against high. Uh, I guess I guess we'll go here. I right, sure we'll just go here. Whatever it doesn't matter. That's that's close enough. And then I think that's three nights, so we might pause there and save up a little bit of gold and maybe try to get um, some glade runners down. That seems pretty reasonable. Uh, yeah, that seems correct. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go there. Let's go do a little more scouting. Okay, there's another Ancient Wonder. It looks like the the AI is not getting cut out entirely from the Ancient Wonder gig. That's that's important. That's important. If you can deny them any Ancient Wonders, then it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Um let's see. A gust key. Five tier ones. I think we want to kill these guys with the uh, with the knights. I think that's what we want to do. I think if I think if we're gonna compete with the uh, the AI over there, we're gonna need those knights to be in in pretty good shape. If we can get them up to like silvers, if we get them to silvers, they'll be durable. If we get them up to elite, they'll they'll do a lot more damage. That's good. And that's good. And that's good. All right. So actually, we we do now have an army in the area that I feel like we can probably take that monster den on. Ah, but we also want to we also want to get the cursed barrow down. It's three turns away, Walker. Your extra hero is lying under the dirt, son. It's right there. It's right there. And that's like right outside the enemy, the enemy capital or or secondary city too. That's that's actually really cute. That gives us an opportunity to to fight productively over there. Twelve more turns on ride for vengeance. So we don't need to go there immediately. I think. I think we I think we have time. I think we're we're going to grab the cursed barrows. I think we have the time to do it cuz we can even do it with a, a a an outpost that's two away. So what we can do is if we see here, this outpost is not naturally adjacent to the cursed barrow, but because of the wonder architect's perk and the materium 1, what we're going to be able to do here is drop in this outpost It'll grab this forester as the natural work uh, work post tile, but then it'll also have the reach to grab the cursed barrows um, from the wonder architects itself, and that means that we're down here for that fight. Yeah, you need to make more outposts. You just like always need to make outposts. They're really good. Outposts are really good. They exploit land, they give you movement, they give you healing, they give you everything. They give you everything. Maybe we can take both of these fights. 
Do we have anybody who can just like walk over there and do that? Um, we could summon a lesser snow spirit. That could that could be a way to do that. All right, yeah, that's fine. That's what we'll do. Uh, you are level four and you're in range, and that is enough that I think we shouldn't lose anything. But I'll I'll include the knight for good effort. Just because this is like nobody with pole arms, um, and if the opponent does not have pole arms, the knights are pretty effective. They are pretty effective. You lose everything that isn't research from the wonder, though. No, so when you when you um. When you have an outpost, the outpost naturally exploits the, a couple of different global resources. Mana, gold, and knowledge. It'll also naturally exploit the Imperium from controlling any uh, associated wonder, or, uh, any, any wonders that are uh, associated with it, as long as it's your outpost. If you give it to a vassal, then it's no longer under your control anymore, so you, you don't get the Imperium. But if it's your outpost, you do get the Imperium. The things that you don't get naturally are things like if you build um, like an outpost with a forester or whatever, then like you don't get the, the production from the forester, but that's not always a problem because sometimes you like get good value out of just having an outpost like here with a, a forester that because of wonder architects will pick up the cursed barrows but once you get materium one online uh military engineering then like just putting outpost places is really good kind of no matter what you're doing because outposts are going to give you extra movement speed and extra healing even if they don't give you the resources it doesn't matter because the resource that it's giving you sort of like implicitly is power and time it's making your army stronger by letting them heal and it's giving you time by allowing your your units to you know get extra hp and and level up a little faster hopefully they evolve hopefully these stupid storms or these stupid spirits stop dying all right defenders you guys are not allowed to do any damage because like that's the way that this game works defenders are not allowed to deal damage good they did they did not deal damage at least not enough. Um, but now we need to get... I guess... I guess I just want to send this pike all the way out there to just, like, pop that tower, honestly. Like, I just want to see what's going on over here. We need vision. We need vision, Jim. Let's see. Oh, we could work on a scholar's guild. Um or Wizard Tower level one or Item Forge. Those are all really important here. Uh, Scholar's Guild is only plus 20 knowledge, but all right, we'll take a Scholar's Guild. Like we, we're behind enough on knowledge because we died twice that I think, uh, I think it's called for. There's a forester that's turning into a farm. Why are you turning into a farm? Because because you thought you needed to build a uh, a stonemason here, even though you already built a stonemason there, Walker. That's why you need to do that. You need to do that because you are not paying attention. All right, uh, let's build an abbey or a, a quarry in Abbey Vale. So one of the other things that's like kind of nice about Druidic Transformers is uh, Terraformers is that it scales up with your food really quickly. Because the, the natural things that cities are going to produce a lot of, just from like the tiles bringing things in, are food and production. Those are just some of the most common resources in the game. And so you're gonna get a lot more out of Terraformers on those than anything else. But that's also not a bad thing because those are some of the fastest in terms of like early game economic scaling. Like mid game, you really do need um, to respect your knowledge and, and your Imperium. But like in the very, very, very beginning, the, th the easiest way to scale those things up is to get production. That's one of the reasons why, why Mystic was so bad for so long. Here's, here's a little bit of knowledge and mana to, to compensate for missing out on enormous amounts of, of early game volume and economy. All right, all right, you guys, you guys just vibe, I guess, and then everyone's just gonna go in and, and fight everything next turn. Or once we get that hero. 
maybe it's once we get that hero. Let's see if we can walk there. Yeah. So by adding this forester as friendly tiles um, through this outpost, we did make it so that this hero can get to Cursed Barrows a turn faster, which means that now should be able to get here. Should This is already a level two city because it was a, a free city. So we don't need to worry about that. Oh no, it's one of the, the you gotta fight us guys. Well, that's annoying. Um, that means that now our other hero is gonna have to be this Wolven Berserker that we were working on, but that's okay. Like the fact that we can hire a Wolven Berserker instead of a undead monstrosity is is not gonna be the end of the uh, the world for us. It does mean that maybe we fight the cursed barrows later, but we're gonna we're gonna need to play it by ear. We're gonna need to play it by ear. Is it worth it to recruit the hero right now, though? Or should we pick up uh, another city cap? Because if we pick up another city cap, then this could still be a really solid city. Um, what? This is a grassland and a forest. So this is food and um, production. And that's Ashlands and Rocky, so that's production and gold. Grassland, forest, forest, grassland, forest. So yeah, actually this could make a, a really, really solid another, another city. And then we could just use it as a forward base for the Cursed Barrows and for launching attacks against this city. Like, if we wanted to just end the, the fight immediately, then we'd probably go here. But I think it's more fun if we have, like, a long skirmish fight with them and, like, see what sort of things we can get out. And get attacked by that stupid bird. By the birds. All right, let's see. Uh, I guess... I guess we, the fact that we're screwed on that hero side means we probably do need to recruit this hero here because we don't want to have our, our heroes staying at like level three forever. That's not, that is not acceptable. All right, come on down, wolf guy. You're a new governor. Um, you're going to be the governor of Triway. You're going to love it there. I'm not sure, you know, how, how you feel about Triway, but, but you're going to love it there. It's, it's going to be cool. Thunder warding. Let's see. Wait, wait Winslet, you, you almost said something so confident that you thought you misread it when you were testing things. Which, what, what, what testing? What, 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 what see, like the testing for which ones are, are uh, conquerable and which ones aren't? forgot to assign I forgot to assign my my choices of course I did um let's see actually here I think it makes sense for us to go ahead and pick up some magic and then leave production on the outside moving around does that make sense I think that makes sense because that that gives that gives our our empire now the opportunity to grow the fastest so yeah let's take lord of magic um and we'll take I you know what I'll give it undying loyalty just to see what it does but historically, it has done nothing. I would love to see that that's not true. That would be really exciting to find out. But historically, what it has done is nothing. Um, we got we got our staves. Uh, I guess we'll take mark of invulnerability also, just for added troll survivability. The fact that this guy is on the outside of this fight, I guess, and there's multiple pull arms here. All right, so we're not gonna we're not gonna activate this fight this turn. I think we're just gonna have to activate those. It's silly and annoying, but it is the way it is. Um, you should not be in that fight, and you should not be in that fight. So you guys go here, and then we're gonna have our important units, the ones we want the experience points to go on. They will go here, and. I guess I guess I'm gonna keep working on those two snow spirits and hope that they make it. But this has just been a really rough start. 
but I think I think once we hit this point, this should be pretty good. This should be pretty good. Yep, the knights got through the fight. Nobody died. We didn't use any mana. They they are a lot more fragile than you than you would hope, and part of that is, of course, that they just don't have like solid supports backing them up. Um, but you you can kind of get around that by playing with Tome of Faith. Uh, that was something that I did debate trying to bring on this group here, because Tome of Faith does give you access to a, be a meaningfully better uh, support unit. Chaplains are a lot better than than Bannermen without Tome of Warding. Once once you factor that in, then then Bannermen are pretty good. They're just like they make the first twenty turns look miserable. I think I think here we're gonna get. The corrupt soul so is the cursed barrow one of them that like you can't because they just look the same to me like this one that looks the same as this one it's just the text on it so like i i guess but that should not be the case like they should they should make these things look different so that way they're a little a little easier to detect on the overworld um, I think that is fine, though. I think that these guys should be able to get through this fight without losing anyone. This is oops all ranged, and we have two shock units and a hero. Yep, there we go. A dragon bane of undead slaying? That's a really cool name for a tier 2 weapon that's just pretty normal, I guess, guys. All right. But whatever we cleared out we cleared out some production and some and some food and then we'll be able to bring uh maybe maybe our hero isn't our ruler isn't even gonna get in on that fight it's so far away because those guys can get there in one turn oh my god but the fighting just deals so much damage how am i supposed to not take it it does a billion okay See, you go here, go here. Let's see. I don't think we need literally everybody coming in this direction, but but we really don't have anywhere else for them to go right now. So they'll they'll go there. All right. What? Okay, well, we could um, go ahead and gain 12 and reach a pact of cooperation immediately, or anything else. Like, why, why would we not do this? The, we will do whatever you want, Ragash. The, if you want us to gain some evil to gain a pact of cooperation, I'm here for it. Because now we can actually start interacting with these guys. Oh, they, they, have, a, they have the tranquility pool. Holy crap, they have the Tranquility Pool. All right, this is this is it. Um, so we take Tranquility Pool there. We have Astral Dew there. We have Archon's Blood there. We have Cosmoflux Elixir. This is the, in agonizing on a, a hero development standpoint. These guys are a lot weaker than they usually are, and it's because they keep dying. But other than that, this, this is looking pretty good. Uh, evil events are a lot better than good. Like, good is... Good is costly to develop and maintain and is mostly not good um mostly mostly yeah all right this is fine we'll just we'll just go here there are enough there are enough units here now to help support the heroes too that that that's uh becoming a solution rather than a problem and now we can work up our ride to vengeance to where it slingshots up to eight probably because of the banner there and then the the ride there so yeah we need to clear this stuff out we're, once upon a time once upon a time the plan was that we were going to take that spring of youth but that is that is the way that the game goes sometimes all right stabs of warding now finally our bannermen are combat effective or less combat ineffective I think we're gonna save our mana at this point because I would like to get magical wards down. It doesn't matter in every single fight, but in the fights where it does matter, um, those are A, typically harder fights to begin with, and then B, it's, it's gonna save you uh, like some units just from 
straight dying because it's gonna modify your your hero here because we're playing with a champion. Um, oh, because of the fog of war thing. That makes sense. Uh, here, yeah, we'll take we'll take Arcane Institute into Town Hall too. This one is building pretty slowly, but I guess we can fix that by just adding more construction. Mm -hmm. Archon blood. So close. So close. I can almost taste it. Uh, oh, there is actually a really posh, uh, nice little spot for us. Yeah, all right, I'm in for it, quarry. So our Heldon is is not gonna hit uh, 10 population, probably. It's just gonna be producing knights like all game long. That's gonna be pretty funny. Uh, let's see. We really need a, another quarry in this city, but we also really need to remove those guys from pillaging our backyard. But we have to we have to get the Archon Blood first. It's just it's way too efficient um, to get the Cosmoflux Elixir online because this is if you collect all three of these magic materials here, you get the Cosmoflux Elixir. Po province improvements and in, in provinces with mana resource nodes get plus five knowledge and plus five mana. So that means we've got one, two, three, four. Like, we basically get a free academy right then from just picking it up, and then we'll get more and more and more as we as we grow. So it's, it's very strong. And this honestly might be a better city than this, now that I look, about, look at it. Because this doesn't even have the Cursed Barrows online yet, and I'm not 100% I'm not sure if we're going to fight that one or, or not. Alright, so we've... Oh, there's an enemy army right here. Double Sun Priests, uh, Dawn Defender, Dusk Hunter, Daylight Spear. All right, yeah, that's that's cute. This is this is a scenario where you would not want to have uh, undead. That would be pretty bad for you. Here's um, here's actually an opportunity for us to just take a, an infrastructure outpost. We're gonna take this and we're gonna use it to probably grab this as just like a friendly tile but that'll of course give us even faster walking speed and healing speed over there and and it doesn't really cost us anything because there's a mine right here so we're not even really paying anything in upkeep it's just the cost up front uh for putting it down i think that's worth it oh all right so we see through the fog the defenders of the archon blood and the things standing in the way of our cosmoflux elixir there's an exemplar that's that's pretty spooky, um, but I th I think I think I think if we bring the right units to bear over there, that we can beat it down without losing too much stuff. And once we do, once we do, things will be okay. Yeah, but you have to like read the name, Winslaya. You can't do that. That's that's impossible. Reading is reading is overpowered. You can never get it done. So yeah, like from an economy standpoint, I I honestly don't think that we're we're really that far behind, despite having had our our characters die a couple of times, because our our uh, our knowledge is doing okay, um, and we do have knights rolling off the the press. But in a PvP scenario, this would be a very, very tough, uh, tough run to try to win with. I think I think your best bet would probably be to play the other players off against each other, and get 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 Winslay and Zombie to fight. That's that's like if you, if you're not sure how you're supposed to win in PvP, just get Winslay and Zombie to fight, and that'll that'll do like seventy five percent of the work for you. <laughs> All right, so let's go here, and I guess we'll build that as, um, this is the core? No, forest, forest, grassland, forest. Ugh. Forest, rocky, and sand. So this would be, like, the legendary triple space. 
forest, rocky, and sand means that this... Oh, no. Rocky and, and forest are in the same. Yeah, reading is OP, please nerf. I, like, I think that it, it's really a shame that Triumph has, has uh, bowed to the wishes of big reading, and now reading is, like, just so oppressive. But, you know, like, they're going to do something about it. know where we want the capital for this this little city over here to be because we really do not want to be building a city on just food that's that's miserable and that means that this is also pretty miserable and this is better but it's not close enough to pick up the gust keep until it picks up its like third tile unless it skips out on the archon blood immediately which i guess that's not the end of the world but like is is not what we wanted to be doing what we wanted to be doing was getting the archon blood asap and we can't do both because this is definitely all right yeah whatever hemming and hawing aside i think this is this is a much better city and it only means delaying our archon blood by a couple of turns um or we could just take this first and then just get the gust keep connected to it after the the next thing comes out that's eh, probably better, actually. All right, Walker, stop saying blah, 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 blah. All right, blah, 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 blah. All right, blah, 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 blah. And move your units. Just just move them. There are people watching this. Think of the children. Um, you can't get in. Can you get in range to participate in this fight this turn? You can't even get in range to participate in the Archon Blood fight this turn. Amateur. Amateur. Rank amateur. Alright, Dread Spider Mount. Oh! Ha! Ha! They said I couldn't get in range to get into the fight. But what they didn't realize was that I was about to find my own spoodily doodly spider mount and fly across the battlefield. Ha ha ha. And this is great, because now we could we have that other tier two weapon, the brutal great hammer that we could just swap back into, and bam, done. So now we can just keep swapping back and forth between our two tier two uh, mounts. Yeah, change all important text to the cover symbols. Like I just want to be able to play the game while being um, as 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 lobotomized as possible. That's that's my goal. All right, let's bring these knights in because those things are pretty good to get experience points on. Um, I guess we'll kick the peasant pikeman out. Like. I honestly don't care at all about this peasant pikeman getting experience points and getting it a little more healed is fine. And then I guess we can clear Jesus Christ. I guess I guess then we can clear this large monster den and then the and then the great bird nest in like very absurd reverse order. But that's probably that's probably our best bet. It's probably our best bet. Uh, no, I don't think that outpost needs to get anything. I don't think I don't think you get anything fun. All right, you go here, and now we have all three of our heroes in that fight, and you have archery as your first pick up. So we're gonna need to fix that, um, or we could fix that by just making a gun. That's that's certainly a, a way we could fix Vicar Grime. Materium affinity. Oh right, you have Materium affinity. So you can take production and grow um, this city even faster because this city does not currently get the production bonus anyway because it doesn't have a, oh man, it doesn't have anything. So the triway is garbage. Whenever we get this other city going, that's where that, that other hero is going to go. That's what it boils down to. Triway sucks. Uh, well, let's make one defender, because now we have three knights, and knights are way, way, way more effective, but they are also way, way, way more expensive, and we are down to 26 gold per turn right now, so we need to respect that. 
some builds will want Phantasm Warriors ASAP, um, but given that we are now on Knights and stuff, I don't think we're going to be bulking our army out that much with Phantasm Warriors. But be aware that you absolutely can start on Tome of Warding and get Phantasm Warriors and get them, get like really good value out of the Phantasm Warriors for like the first 30, 35 turns or so. They, they drop off, so like you do not want to assume that they're going to be part of your army forever, because um, hopefully they're not. But for the very beginning phase, they do make your creeping a lot better. Like, a lot, a lot better. Alright, do we need... Do we need anybody else in this fight? I guess I wouldn't hate having the bannerman here, but we're definitely not going to bring the corrupt soul here, because all of these guys are going to be dealing spirit damage, and the corrupt soul... Uh, by virtue of being undead is spirit weak and this is one of these decisions that you do need to like kind of make as you go along um like is it currently worth it risking in in the fight that you're about to take blah 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 and in this case the risk to reward is is definitely definitely not there definitely not there um you're level five you're level four you're not getting anything from this fight but maybe we could get a level up after both of those fights with this hero. Yeah, that could be worth it. All right, so let's go here. Good, yep. Carrion bird, not as good, but that's all right. It's, it's the way it is. And this was, this was the capital. This was the capital. So now to get around the leadership penalty problem, we're going to do this and, oh no, the bannerman and the, uh, the bad or pseudo badly injured, uh, hero can't go together in the same stack. So we can't get that healing off. That's unfortunate, but it's the way it is sometimes. Uh, brewer ogre. I don't think I care that much about getting more experience points on the brewer ogre. I think I think this is gonna have to be the uh, the army that we're gonna send in here, but because we are fighting against a tier four and there's uh, Archon Martyrdom here on the field, I am gonna make uh, mana available to these troops. These are high quality and important parts of our army, and uh, these guys are weak to to uh, frost damage. One of the many one of the many weaknesses of of Lightbringers here. God. Stop dying! <laughs> Stop dying! <laughs> Just stay alive, please, heroes. These guys are embarrassing. All right. Well, we got we got that guy out of the way, and now finally we can get experience leader on the books and start working on leveling up these snow spirits. And yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna need to go up north first. I think we're gonna need to take care of this monster den and the small the small monster den. I think we have to remove those two things from the board so that way they're not putting stuff into the back the backyard the way that this is just getting burned down by by that great bird nest. At least it's only burning down the great the the, the research post. Could be it could be worse. It could be worse. Alright, you guys go get experience leader. Um, and you go here. Oh, we should have, we should have actually watched that fight to see if it used, uh, the steadfast ability. I'm going to assume no, uh, but we will, we will need to confirm that whenever we get to like the large monster den or whatever, that, that it is in fact still doing nothing because it looks like it's doing nothing and it does normally do nothing. But if the, if the auto resolve has fixed that, then that is a big upgrade for, for Feudal's early game, and then you can start doing that more proactively. Uh, you know, I think, I think this is an opportunity for us to grab stand together. It does potentially add extra damage. Either that or Sentinel. Sentinel is also pretty solid with a power weapon, and this guy's probably going to be on power weapons for most of the game. So, yeah, all right. All right, all right. I, yeah, I, I can see what we're doing. I can see what we're doing. What we're doing is we're bleeding gold, because these stupid idiots keep getting themselves killed. And 
there's an NPC army that might be worth harassing with Blizzard first. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're going to grab that outpost. And we're going to turn you into a city. And it says that we're going to go over our cap, but we're not really. Because what we're actually going to do while the... Uh, the city is growing here is we're going to get some more imperium and then we're going to put that imperium into increasing our city cap and then we will have the city cap necessary and then we'll have four cities and then at four cities like it kind of if, if you have four cities and your opponent has three it kind of doesn't matter what else is going on like we're going to outscale them pretty quickly and then we should be able to get up to four sooner or later Oh no. All right. So now we're going to hit Tome of Glades, which is, which is important for us in terms of increasing our, our combat ability. Um, we're going to be able to use the summon entwined protector. Uh, this is turn 23 and our ruler has died twice. <laughs> this is like, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're making as best progress as we can. This is, this is what we were looking for. Just spending all of our mana trying to dig for entwined protector. So that way when we get entwined protector, we can't summon it. That's, that's what we really wanted. Um, but you know what? It's okay. Because once we get that thing down and we we like clear the space out because we do have Cosmoflux, I, I think that we will be able to really just start cranking these guys out. And getting a bunch of tier threes backing up your uh, your knights is pretty good. And then we'll probably be ready to fight the enemy AI. If we end up with... Um, time to build some glade runners and stuff then we will i would love i would love to to get those guys down and there's another astral do all right yeah there's a lot of really high quality stuff up here um hopefully we don't lose too much taking control of it because we've god we've already lost enough um but assuming we can take it then we'll be okay is there gold there no there's man there's knowledge there jesus christ we don't have any gold for even getting our third hero back. Ugh. It's just gonna be you and me, Molda. <laughs> Moldy, whatever. You, you know, if you're only gonna have a one hero, you probably should know their name. That's just, it's the least you can do. They are your coworker. Um, I guess, I guess I'm gonna send this knight here. Cause the thing is with three knights, Three knights, uh, knights deal extra damage to large targets. Large target, large target, large target, large target, large target. Everything is large target over there, pretty much. And that's going to be the case with a lot of these um, big things coming out of large monster dens. And it's one of the big advantages for knight, for uh, for feudal, is that, that knights are actually pretty solid units. It's just that the, uh, the, the early game, as as you might have noticed, is is a little a little shaky. It's a little shaky. Boy. We could use a lot more gold. We could use a lot more gold. We could use so much more gold. Maybe we take this small monster. Ah, oh, God, Walker. Just like. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe you just like walk towards the enemy and see if we can get into a fight. It's turn 23. You have like four units. You can do it. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Uh, favorite racial tier three, I think in terms of like combat effectiveness, I think my favorite is probably still the Bastions. I think in terms of design, it's a thousand percent the Ancestral Wardens because I just like spears. Like I'm not a complicated man. I love spears. They're cool. And and if you don't like spears, then I will unfriend you on Facebook. Um, but I think I think knights are better. Like. These in particular are pretty beefy boys because we got the uh, the extra HP from the the mammoth going on and the extra defense from tough. I think that they're still probably a little fra more fragile than they need to to be. Hey, what's up? Going? What's going on, Bruno? Um, we're just we're playing here. We we've got a run going where we uh, we're playing with feudal and we've died twice in the first twenty three turns. But we're not going to be deterred. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not reloading for anything we're, we're just gonna kill stuff we'll be fine um and i think i think on the note of killing stuff i think we're gonna take the large monster and fight next turn uh does that sound correct 
We could get the knight of si the the signet of knighthood down. We could try to use a summon lesser snow spirit. But like the big advantage that we have here is that we're just gonna blizzard this thing. Um and that'll start them with a lot of damage. I wish we had enough casting points to do it twice, but unfortunately that is not the world that, that we live in. Uh and I guess I guess I guess we're gonna keep the dream of slingshotting the level alive. Because we're level six right now, so if we do the large monster den and then the small monster den, then I, I this should be this should be enough to, to get us there. Yeah. Let that that let that be a lesson to you. If you just say this should be enough and then that should be enough and then that should be enough and then bing bang boom and then ta da, like that, you know that's and then the, then that's number wang, and then that's number wang. In case in case you were wondering. All right, yeah, we got we got a motley assortment of units here, but like I feel like we're we're probably okay. We're probably okay. Yeah, getting just a ton of, of knowledge so that you get to the point where you can do whatever you want to after you hit your tier fives is like one of the really big strengths of Age of Wonders 4. If you can if you can start growing your knowledge economy to the point where you can actually like be even stronger after you hit, hit your tier fives rather than slowing down, then you're just gonna bury your enemy in value. Um oh, god damn it. We were gonna work on like crazy crazy farm strats let's see if we can do if we if we can still do anything with with crazy farm oh oh so that's it's a it's that jerk oh my god it's that jerk well let's see and this is a this is a random defender that we built on a lark um and then a def and a bannerman I guess if we can bring a couple of other units over there, then I'm okay with with them um, trying to fight this with another hero, like our first, or our next hero. First fight for them. I think that's okay. I think we can do that. Is there anybody else that we can send over there who's not a knight? Because those are important. And is fast enough to get there in time to participate. Bueller, Bueller anyone all right yeah you can go here carrion bird is probably not going to make a big difference in this large monster den fight but uh, another tier two fighter and like carrion birds have the carrion feed ability and they do some damage blah 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 they do okay they do okay yeah mist mislings are good it's just that they're they're still they're still solid without being like insane whereas the the mist ability is just like really really broken very very silly very very silly we could get extra from the rally but the problem is that our gold is stretched really really thin right now um we do kind of need to prioritize setting our our gold aside for just getting a third hero down now that the third hero has died again i've had three hero deaths that's really expensive um Oh man. Oh no. Oh no. Cause now we could we could build the academy, which I really do want to build. Um, but I do think I do think it is necessary for us to to get that hero down. At which point like we've built a scholar's guild, which generates the same amount of, of knowledge as an academy would, but costs more. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's okay. That's, that's what we what we meant to do. Get go 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 find me gold, peasant. Go out there and find me gold. That's your job. All right. A legendary zealot. A legendary zealot emerges from the fog. A dread gazebo. I think that's going to be the end of this little scouting party archer out here. Oh no. The AI is is crowding in on the Spring of Youth, and our our friend and ally in in Ragash. At least we're way ahead there on on our cooperation. Like this actually probably will become a a vassal of ours, perhaps accidentally, but it, it will become a vassal of ours. Uh, all right, yeah, that's fine. And then 
that's okay. And the defender is going to wait here for another little party to rally up. And now we just need gold right here. Just give me give me some gold from a large monster den fight. That's reasonable. No, stop killing my guy. Get out of here. Jerk. Unbelievable jerk. Wow. We're gonna we're gonna just bounce off of those those ancient wonders. They're gonna be right there, right next to a city that we're founding, and we're not gonna have it under our control. We need we need to fix that. That is that is a big problem for a build like this with Wonder Architects. Just the fact that Triway isn't getting extra production is, is kind of a problem because our economy is so thin. But, you know, held on, this is this is at 88 production per turn. Like it is building stuff. And it's been there for most of the game. So it, it is actually getting infrastructure down. Um I'm gonna go ahead and grab grab this as a forester actually so that way we can switch this forester into a research post uh, because this one is going to be under threat of that infestation for at least a little while at least a little while because we're going to need we are going to need to clear all that that goop out oh my god there's their city there's their city kid all right Let's see. You can... I guess we can go here. And we can go here. And, uh... Let's see. We could bring in one more uh, snow spirit before the fight, but I think realistically any snow spirits we summon before this fight are more likely to die than not. Um, and we're kind of low enough on mana that I don't feel like wasting them but the rest of this does actually look like we're in pretty good shape in terms of our military and let's make sure that there's nothing that we're sitting on good lord we need to we need to get an item forge we need money for an item forge walker you need money for everything I don't know if you know this they didn't teach you this in school but you need money for everything all right let's get a uh, blizzard on the large monster den that only did about 100 CP worth of damage, like, on the, the front end of it, so it doesn't sound as impressive. But then you get, like, minus three status resistance on all of the Butcher Ogres, and because we're going to fight this with, um, with a, like, we're going to watch it and throw the auto-resolve on, I think having access to a little extra status resistance is a big deal. But I think after this, I'm probably going to take a short break. Um, let's see, what time is it? What, what time is it, Walker? It's, like, 2 o'clock. Yeah, all right. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna have this fight, and then I'm probably gonna take a like a bio break for about five minutes or something, and then and then we'll we'll keep it going. I think I I really do think that we're gonna have the time to finish this this game today. That's my hope, because um, it's only two o'clock and we're like already on turn twenty five or whatever. And despite the uh, <laughs> despite the losses that we have endured, it does not look like the AI has like massively outscaled us. You, we saw the ruler there, who's only still only at level five, and so I think we got options here. Craig, don't be a jerk. the The most annoying thing that this thing can do is terrifying gorging, because we have no tier fours in this army, and I don't know when we're going to get a tier four in this army. I'm not sure if we can get a tier four in this army, like, in a reasonable time frame, given the, the tomes that I think we're going to be going through. Um, and we do need to, we do need to start managing our mana pretty aggressively from here, because we need to get, uh, entwined protectors down, like ASAP. They are going to be pretty solid against high. Just because, like, there's nothing that's going to prevent them from being useful. All right, great. We got we got frozen down, and just like that, knights deleted, just deleted a butcher ogre. Holy crap! That is the power of knights against um, giants. If we can clear the immo the immobility from this knight, then it can also do uh, just outrageous amounts of damage. But as it as it stands, it looks like it looks like our uh, 
our feudals are are starting to find their their footing. They really do a lot more work against uh, large units than they do against small. That's that is unfortunately the case. And here, boy, yeah, would it have been worth it for us to run resistant instead of tough? Maybe, because um, like we definitely would have gotten a, taken a lot less damage on the knight that turn. Oh no! They got one. I mean, that's 140 gold. That's uh, that's not where we want to be. All right, let's see. Do you have you have undying loyalty? Are you going to use it? Are you going to use it? <laughs> are, are you gonna Are you gonna use the uh, the power that you got there, kid? Let's see. I mean, I guess we're gonna take the crag down. That's gonna. Yep, there it is. And it looks like we are probably only going to lose one night. Um, but they they are very fragile, even with the, the 10 extra HP. Because they are only base 90, and because they don't have like incredibly high defensive stats, because um, they are a tier 3, but they're a tier 3 shock, they, they, they are pretty fragile. They're pretty fragile. Alright, so it looks like we're going to lose a knight and a peasant pikeman. And probably that's it. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna be it. I don't I don't think that these guys are gonna have the strength to kill that other knight. What else can we do to make the the knights even more durable? I mean we could have a better support unit. That that would be a way for them to be even more durable. Okay, take that out. Yep. Okay. No, guys, stop it. You have to attack the swamp ogre, the swamp troll. It's right there. Stop attacking other things and then leaving yourself being open to flanking. That's not cool. You're giving me stress. Like pay attention to the board, please. This is this is the auto resolve AI though. Like it it's a uh, it's I think a, a challenge in a and I think really interesting because it does it does require you to like build an economy that can sustain losing hundreds or thousands of gold and mana worth of value uh, if things go badly. If if things go well, then you can you can get away with it. But things go badly a lot. Okay, well, all right. Yeah, the knights did the work against the things that they could do work against. And then we lost one of the veterans, you jerk. Chaos Eater, a tier four primary weapon though. We traded, we traded a knight for a tier four primary weapon, but unfortunately it deals burning. Ugh. All right, well, I guess we need to, we do now need to build a, um, a, a an item forge. Because we have outrageously good, yeah, single player, especially because we're just like playing with nonsense here. This is this is going to be interesting. This is going to be really challenging for us to to come up with the resources to fight the bad guys. Because this this, I don't I don't think I I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil the rest of the video for you. I don't think that they've done enough to make um to make feudal better by including druidic terraformers. I don't even know if that was like meant to be a goal of the game of, of including it or not i i you know that's up to, to triumph to to describe but uh feudal is still pretty bad unfortunately like the their bannermen are just like hilariously slow and knights are still very fragile for um tier three even even with the mammoths on board they were still pretty fragile um maybe you could get there maybe you could get there by by uh, taking resistant instead of tough, but like eh, we have, we do have Tome of Warding. It's just that the AI is not very good at using what feudal is good at using, and there's not really a way to fix that until you fix the AI. Uh, that's that. Are we gonna get this thing high enough level that it's gonna actually gain a level off of this fight if we do this fight and then that one with eight units? Maybe not. This this might. be might not get it yeah if you do if you do feudal then like 90 percent of the time you end up taking most of your army from things that are not your your uh, units 
Yeah, that's okay. How? How are you gonna do this to me? How are you gonna do this to me? Okay, well, I said I was gonna take a, a quick bio break, so I'll be back in like five minutes, um, and then we'll we'll clear out the rest of this little space here. Uh, hopefully we will get a level up on Moldy the Inspiring off of this little fight, get ourselves to level eight, clear that, and then I think maybe we'll be able to take the fight to the, uh, to the AI, even though we've been just like bleeding gold and units for the last 10, 15 turns. Yeah, they just die so fast. They they need, I think they probably need one more defense and one more resistance as like a, a bottom, as a minimum. They, they are pretty fragile. All right, I'll be right back. All right, let's see here. Okay, so we do have that tier four weapon now, but looking over it, burning is such a bad effect. I guess the one nice thing here is that it does have Chaos Eater, and in um, in manual battles, Chaos Eater is like really, really insane in terms of the value that it generates for you. It's a great, great way to scale up. But right now, I honestly, I think that our power weapon is, just does more damage. Like this is, this is going to be something that's going to help us break through defense mode, which is a really big deal when it comes to upgrading your your damage. And this is only a twelve sixteen. I mean, it is it is multi attacks, but this is slowed. I guess I, you know what? Whatever. We'll use the tier four weapon for now because it's cool. And then, and then later when we die, I'll blame it on that. Um, and then, and then people will say, "But you chose to wear that." And then I will say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But what you're overlooking is uh, smoke bomb. And then I'll throw a smoke bomb, and then I'll run away. Um, and then they'll be like, "Wow, that was really effective." So here, I'm gonna take actually probably the defiant armor as our generic armor that we're gonna walk around with. Um, we are specifically fighting against high. Oh, but these guys are like, uh, wait, I could have sworn those guys were doing lightning damage. No, maybe not. I mean, we already have frost resistance because of the mammoth. So I don't think we really need any more of that. And we kind of really don't need blight resistance either. It's pretty pointless. So yeah, I guess we're going to go into 
Defiant Armor for now. This is going to be the best thing that we have currently against the, the enemy who is high, but if, if we're playing against um, just the board, which is where we are, kind of, then I think those other you know, those other armors are worth to just have around for, for good value. All right, let's see. Are we close enough in levels? Is this gonna is this gonna get there? Six. So this is 18 experience points. That means that if we have like six units in this fight, maybe we will level up beforehand. But if we don't level up, then this is a disaster because then we'll get like one experience point from the the quest instead of like 40. So we're not gonna take the fight this turn. We're gonna be we're gonna be chickens about it because I'm not gonna do the math and. Triumph is a is a user interface thing. Please change this. Like it's so much better that this says you know twelve out of twenty four and and twenty three out of thirty six. Like I know that you want to make it so that it's a little harder to do like hero stacking and management and stuff. But like once you've played enough hours in the game, you start to get a feel for exactly like how much experience points this this is actually. But like it's just a bad user experience for people who don't play this game way 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 too many too many hours and even even i play this game too much and like i still couldn't tell you exactly how many experience points this needs how many how much does this need i don't know i don't know and then and then it becomes impossible for us to do the math of like can i take this fight before i take this one and and i don't think that's good i don't know i don't think that's good i don't think that's a desired user experience um but maybe that's just me. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna do that to grab that as our uh, as our tile, and then we'll probably add this actually as another um, outpost to grab that tile, because this is the corner of the world, and we need resources. We need resources to fix our stupid stupid mortals, 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 mortals out here, just mortaling. You know how it is. You ever, you ever been walking around and you just encounter some mortals by the side of the road mortaling and you, <laughs> you ask them, hey, how's it going, mortals? And they give you, like, a side eye, like, what are you talking about? You're in public. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> all right. Let's summon another another uh, snow spirit in and then let's start working on magical wards. And that actually works out great for us because it's, like, the exact amount of casting points that we have and need. Um, unfortunately, we did lose a, a knight, and we lost a hero, so, like, we are, we are really in the hole in terms of money over here. Uh, it's, it's gotta be worth it to wait. It's gotta be worth it to wait. There's gotta be money out here somewhere, he says, spending money on an outpost. Uh, yeah, alright, whatever, like, this is, this is fine. Oh, you want us to construct more conduits? Absolutely. That's the easiest quest. So some of these quests, they'll come to you and they'll be like, yeah, we lost one. We lost one in our in our big, big, fancy our big, fancy battle because it like charged in on people and then just like stuck its butt out at the enemy. And then it and then it got hit on the face and it died like I don't who could have imagined who could have seen this coming? Um, all right, so the, but the research posts that are in our capital need to remain research posts because those we have, uh, those we have a scholar's guild working on, which means that they actually give us extra research. You know, sometimes thinking at the same time reveals to you solutions like this. That's also a great way to get a conduit. And then I don't even need to do that because I'll do a conduit here, grabbing that tile. And then we only need to change one thing over to a conduit. That one? Is that right? That looks right. That does look to be correct, Jim. That does look to be correct. Well, in that case, I guess that's what we're going to do. All right. So there's a plan that I just that I just talked through. Um, yeah, the like. Knights are actually very powerful. They're just very fragile, and unfortunately, they re they like they require that you that you are manualing most of the time. Um, there are some ways to get around that, but then even after you get to the point where like you've probably made your knights strong enough to 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 like really be good, 
I think at that point you're probably on to Tyrant Knights. Because um, if you're doing, if, if you're playing around with Feudal, you kind of need access to, uh, you, you kind of need to use your order. Because otherwise you take an order that just doesn't do anything. And one order in your Empire Tree is not like the end of the world. But like, if you don't, if you don't actively do something with your order, the game won't. Because it's, because order isn't just like that bad. So like, you, you need to do something with it. Um, and Tyrant Knights are right there. And if you're playing as a feudal and, and like you're playing around and you took a fancy mount, then your Tyrant Knights get the fancy mount. You don't, you're not required to take the fancy mounts, but I do think that they are generally pretty good. Uh, especially if you're going to have a tier three that you're trying to utilize. Speaking of... We got it. We have enough money that we can build a knight and then realize that why the hell? Oh, because of our city cap, because we went over our city cap and now we have to click expanded governance. Done. All right. That's why the knight was taking so long. We got enough gold. I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, order early game is not good. Um, like, zeal is very, very powerful, uh, like, in a lot of different ways. It provides enormous amounts of production, and it is actually something that I think we should try with uh, druidic terraformers, but probably not feudal. Um, and then you play probably with a wizard king, because a wizard king with, with, uh, with, with druidic terraformers and, and Tome of Zeal can cast the construction spell many times and you do that and get plus 20% extra production on it and you can build basically any sort of infrastructure in any city whenever you want to, wherever you want to, anytime, anytime. Uh, and it's, it's really good. It's really, really good at building stuff. It used to be that just building stuff was like not enough and, and you know, there's a certain aspect to us saying it used to be, and then we're watching this game where, like, our ruler has died twice, and hopefully not a third time, thank God. Um, and and things are just kind of, like, plodding along, and, and that is that is the way that these games go sometimes, that, like, they the military development is still the same patch to patch to patch. I would not be surprised if um, the, the things that were good remain good and the things that were bad remain bad what was i talking about wizard kings oh yeah wizard kings with with a uh, with the ability to to do zeal that's pretty good wizard kings and zeal do, do pretty well for themselves um i guess i'm gonna bring in this corrupt soul for this fight because it at least it does have uh the resistance to frost but more importantly like if this thing doesn't get a lot of experience on it, then it is going to be worth literally nothing against an enemy that is literally playing as high. So we're probably not going to recruit another corrupt soul. And if this thing dies, it dies. Um, but if it if it's going to fight a, against an enemy that's going to deal a lot of extra damage to it, then it needs experience points. Otherwise, it's just it's just a wasted slot. I'm gonna take this fight without mana, um, cause we, we do need to start just like casting things. Brother, brother, <laughs> like, you are killing me. Um, Rampart, I don't even think that's the right city. No, it's gonna put, it's gonna funnel a bunch of production or a bunch of draft into the city that doesn't have uh, a way to use it. All right, well, we're gonna get a, hunter spider mount that our, <laughs> our newly dead ruler can use yeah don't don't try to use don't try to use feudal i think i think we'll see um if there's a way to make druidic terraformers work on high though i think that high offers usually like just the most uh in terms of like easily accessible big flat bonuses that then druidic terraformers can work off of and, and High does actually use um, Tome of Cryomancy pretty well. And if you wanted to do different weird things, it also uses Tome of Rock pretty well. Um, 
So you can do you don't you don't have to do the same thing that we did with the high hermits and like build in the same the same basic direction. Should have brought in the ogre every single time. That's that's why that's why we keep dying because we keep losing the ogre or keep forgetting the ogre. But at least we have a Cosmoflux elixir, and our knowledge economy is still somehow f close to functional, despite being the dead three times now. Three times now. Part of it is also that we are playing with a, a minor disadvantage, and that puts you, guess what, at a minor disadvantage. Um, I think I'm going to take Visions of Woe. That is a really important thing for you to get access to uh, when it comes to beefing you up in the early game. Wait a second. I could have sworn we chose to use Chaos Eater. Didn't, didn't we have that conversation? Did I have that conversation with myself? Did I say we're going to use Chaos Eater and then, and then I was like muted? Am I muted right now? Walker, are you muted right now? You're not muted right now. No. All right, good. That if, if, if I, if I were muted right now, then that would just be part of the player experience. Um, let's grab defense actually. Like generally with these big damagey guys, the best, the best, uh, defense is a good offense, but we had enough level up picks that we could have picked one defense before killing momentum. And now with killing momentum, finally, we can have a robe that does something. We have a robe that does something instead of a robe that does nothing. Uh, so for most for most things you kind of don't want um, rock as a as a tome, but I do think that there's a specific space for high in particular to utilize it simply because high doesn't have like a good um, defensive matrix towards the top end of their their like structure of, of units. They have awakeners, which are good, very good units. Awakeners are very good units. They do a lot of damage. Um, they, they do need support in order to do a lot of damage because like the way they deal the damage is by adding distracted to stuff. But like when you do that, when you do the thing that, that Awakeners are good at, they are very good at doing it. Here, honestly, actually now we might drop the knight and are we, am I seriously gonna hire a level one hero? Am I gonna seriously hire a level one hero? just so we can get something to lead those units into that fight and prevent us from having to rebuild this. I, this is agony. This is agony. Don't make me do this. Don't make me do this, held on. If only, if we were not dead, then we could be casting the Entwined Protector right now. You enormous jerkwad. I mean, I, all right, whatever. We're, we will not, we, we will rebuild this. It costs us more gold, but I think it is better than. <sighs> oh, wait. Oh my God. Is this knight going to be able to make it in time? Is that it? Are we going to get there with this new with this new mount that we got and the sword, which I may apparently have forgotten to equip to somebody. Two turns. Why? Just let me get there. Just, just please. How, how are you going to tell me that I can't get there in, in one turn walking through only friendly terrain? Is it because this is not friendly terrain right here? Are we going to be like one tile short? Yeah, we're going to be one tile short from getting our, our hero in on that fight. Oh, my God. The stars. Okay, well, that's fine. If we lose, if we lose a quarry to a pillage, that's annoying, but not the end of the world. Let's see. What else can we build out here? Um, I guess we do need to build a workshop and we need to get you growing. Um, if we wait, then we will not have enough to hire a level three. And they're level five now. Oh, they're level five now. Well, all right, that that's 
you know, it's annoying that we've had all these heroes die, but now they they're leveling up enough in the background, which if you if you know the exact the exact mechanism for that, then please let me know because I have tried to figure it out what the exact counting is on that, and I still don't know. Um, but we have done whatever whatever sacrifices to the blood god that they required, and now we have level five heroes that are rolling hot off the press. So like that means they they come with a signature skill. They're gonna be a lot more a lot more combat ready. Um, and I, I swear to God, and we don't even have enough Imperium to take road building. Uh, well, that's you know that's the way it goes, Walker. This, this is this is what you discovered when you did this count last turn. I don't know why you expected it would be different when you did the count again, but that does sound like a skill issue. It sounds like, that sounds like a skill issue. I think one knight and two tier twos and two, three tier twos and a tier one should take this out. Yeah, this, if the AI loses half this army here, then I don't know, man, like, Feudal, yeah, there it is. Feudal desperately needs their bannermen to be better. That's like the best, the the biggest real problem with their early game is that their support unit is garbage. The fact that this thing is a turn four heal means that like it just puts so little pressure on keeping your units alive in a meaningful fight um, that you just lose way more things than you would versus somebody who has like a real support unit. Like the... Just just one Steel Shaper outputs so much more by both killing the enemy as well as uh, as well as healing on a, a much faster clock. I mean, it's just the way it's gonna be. It's just the way it's gonna be. Keep throwing units into that that uh, buzz saw, but we'll take Item Forge here. Um, even though, like, yeah, we need gold for for everything. Uh, cause we, we, part of everything that we need the gold for is, uh, getting a better weapon. I think, I think, unfortunately, the tier four chaos eater sword is not what the doctor called for. I think what the doctor called for is a gun for our, uh, killing momentum hero. That'll be pretty good. That'll be pretty good. All right. Let's see. I guess, I guess we're just going to keep, keep producing gold. We need to we need to get that we need to get that third hero down. And two more turns in the void for the ruler themselves. So let's see. You could come here, you come here, you come here. And now we have four units for that fight. I mean on the bright side, this uh this other this other hero we got here is definitely gonna put some work in. This one is a level eight hero. Whenever we fight the enemy, that guy is going to be pretty spooky. And I guess because this is the only important unit, we don't want to have that guy die. I'm going to bring the the bannerman along for this until it, it hits legendary. Because if we get a legendary bannerman, that's, that is actually also a lot better. A legendary support of any type is a lot better than a not legendary because of the bolstered resistance buff claws. Uh, yeah, you know what? Whatever. We'll put a we'll put a haste berry back there. I think that's fine. I think that's a fine thing for us to be doing. If we get this small monster den out of the way and grab those haste berries, then if if we're gonna get a fifth city, which remains to be proven, um, then we will we will be able to get it faster. Wow. They are just coming straight up at us. And our ruler is dead. They're coming straight up at us and our ruler is dead. All right. All right. We're going to need to scramble forces and defend Rampart. That is that is what's going on. Is the dream of Hasteberry is dead? I think the dream of Hasteberry might be dead. I think we, I think we need to scramble our forces near Rampart. I think we need to get palisade walls up. We're probably gonna need to buy rush those because um, this does look like they're getting close enough. 
oh no, they don't have the ruler here. Well, we'll we'll put it to chat. We'll see what people want to do. I'm happy to auto resolve that um, because the enemy ruler is not there, and so like from a balancing things perspective, I don't really want to have us uh, manual battle like meaningful fights because it can have some pretty big impacts. But they can also be fun to just see. Uh. Are the phoenixes gonna hunt down the enemy stack that's supposed to be pillaging us? Is that what's about to happen over there? What on earth? Alright, well, if that is what happens, then that is what happens. Um, and I guess this is an opportunity now for us to clear out the gust keep for Rampart, because we're gonna be in the area, and yeah, I guess we're doing that instead of the, the Haysberries, like... We're not going to not put our troops near the enemies. Um, what do you think I am? What do you think I am? Crazy. Not going to not put your troops near the enemies. All right. Let's go here, I guess. Yeah, let's go here. We have one. One of our three knights survived. Good lord. The fragility of mortals. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we my we might end up doing a manual battle today. I think it would be fun, and it would it would give us an opportunity to like show off what different different units are capable of doing, um, with the understanding that like manual battling against the tactical AI right now is like you know manual battling against the tactical AI in Age of Wonders 4. It's just not very strong. Uh, yep, it went in on their army and died. All right, so now we can get, uh, wow, 80 extra knowledge per turn. Um, yeah, that's probably, well, hmm. Okay, so this is 480 knowledge versus getting, uh, this is 120 gold per turn. So this is 720 gold. So can we turn 720 gold productively into more knowledge than this? And I think the answer is yes, actually, because we have a city where we haven't even built um, an academy in here, yeah. And we now have four cities and we haven't even clicked adaptive research yet. So our research economy is about to dramatically outstrip uh, that little growth that they had us quoted out there at 80. We're we're gonna build. We're gonna build all the research infrastructure in these cities, and that's gonna be pretty good at growing our research. If you build research infrastructure, your your research will go up. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Let's see. Um, our, our hero is finally back. Our ruler is finally back. All right, so let's make sure that we're not sending them into a fight where they're going to get soloed. Yep, all right, cool. So we're going to just go down here. Um, and now we actually do have the arsenal, and we have three, we have some things to start infusions with. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's uh, use the, the forge. Doesn't kind of matter what you're doing in regards to the forge. The lowest tier items are the things that if you have like passive income boosts or whatever, like if you're playing with dragons or whatever, the lowest tier items generally provide the least value to own um, versus everything else. So you can usually just burn those. And then, you know, like you probably don't need 15 different staves. Like they are pretty low value as well. Um, we're just trying to build up enough Binding Essence that we can make our first weapon. I like having, uh, I guess, I guess I like some of those. I, that's all right. I don't, I don't hate having either of those. We have two resilient cloaks. They're literally the exact same thing. Um, so your leader should probably not be a purely dedicated support because you need to be able to do deal, to deal damage. There are probably some of the fights that we didn't watch there were probably situations where the the ai chose to act in a supporting role 
rather than act in an offensive role, and then left an enemy AI alive so that the enemy AI could, like, do damage, and then it became, like, a big problem for us, um, and they killed somebody or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that that does happen a lot in the game. Uh, Let's see. Is there anything different between frost damage and lightning damage here? I don't think so. I don't think there's a big difference looking at those. Um, and so I think here, the Chaos Eater, we can disenchant. They're all named Chaos Eater. Everything is a Chaos Eater. Oh, you know what? If we're going to have this fight in like the next four turns, which we're going to have the fight in the next four turns, then we actually need the weapon um, to not be broken down yet. So you do not want to take pure physical. You want to do something here with lightning or frost damage. We already have a lot of things that deal frost damage. Therefore, you might be inclined to like want more frost damage so that you have things that just deal frost damage. But you do want to take some um, mix in terms of the, your ability to interact with the board. And so we're going to take lightning damage here partially because there's like no overlap in terms of um, things that resist this, but also because there are ways to utilize these things together. So for instance, wet gives you uh, the ability to inflict a 90% chance for wet, which is frost and lightning resistance down. So that means that this weapon can both strengthen the rest of our army, which uses the frost damage channel, while also strengthening itself through the lightning damage channel, while also also providing the opportunity to like fight against two different forces at the same time. Um, Frozen, unfortunately, is not a very high chance of working, so I don't think we're going to be interested in that. I think the other things here that are interesting for the, the weapon, I think probably Lifesteal is, is going to be pretty solid for the, the hero that we already have, except that it does already have Lifesteal from Whiteborn, so probably not that. Um, infecting could be good. The, the more that you do manuals, the more infecting is, is better, but it is really good in manual better uh let's see i think yeah bolt beam works in in age of wonders for i think here we're gonna take infecting because this is for a whiteborn hero if we were not on a whiteborn hero then we would want life steal um and probably the crit chance that's pretty good but here because we we have life steal already on the hero that we're being we're building infecting is a pretty messed up effect and can cause some serious problems for your enemy. And for that matter, it adds defensive scaling on this hero. And our spirit resistance is eight. Our spirit resistance is eight on a whiteborn. This is, um, uh, th well, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's number wang, I guess. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're crazy. You can't do that. You're crazy. All right, let's go to Forester. That's fine. We're Now we're at the phase where most of our economy is probably going to be trying to focus on just getting units out. Um, and on that note, I suspect we probably want to just turn that into a mine. I just want to see if there's anything here that we like desperately need to build first with two quarries. Yeah, we'll build a Tithe Shrine. I'm not happy building a Tithe Shrine. I'm sad building a Tithe Shrine. But I will, I will sadly build a Tithe Shrine. Um, and that's okay, and that's okay, and that's okay. All right. Yeah, that all looks fine. Let's see, let's see where we go from here. Oh, we can get magical wards down. All right, cool. Um, that's not going to help our whiteborn hero, which is a little awkward, and it's not going to help our like other weird friend hero. But it's gonna help basically everybody else. And that's that's all that really matters. And now we have Glade Runners. Perfect, right on time. So our, our, you know what? I'm gonna say that the fact that all of our knights died was a feature and not a bug, because those were the alphas. We were just experimenting with them and like smoothing out the the use of cavalry and, and, and stuff like that. We were figuring out the, the way that they were supposed to be used. And then now that they're all dead and we can get tyrant knights instead, we'll we'll come up with a a new way to to use cav, a new doctrine. Yeah, that's the lore. That's the lore. We figured it out. 
the lore of what happened to the knights. They, they all intentionally died in battle because they were they were only the uh, the very first iteration of our heavy cav. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. And we're still going. We're st our knowledge is still growing here. We are we are building things. Our gold economy is about to get a lot bigger. Our army was strong enough that purple ran away. All right, we need to catch those guys. If you are strong enough that the enemy starts pulling units away um, and you have the speed necessary to catch them, then you probably should. Because that's just eliminating big chunks of this army is going to be... Oh no, they're athletic! They're athletic! Eric, why would you do this? Why would you do this? Alright, who would watch a tier list video for the pre-constructed rulers? Be honest. If you would not watch that video, then I don't blame you, because it would be kind of a little shitposty in terms of, of its content. But I think it would be fun. It's just a question of whether or not people would want to watch that. That would probably impact if I if I ever were to record it. I'm gonna take a one more night. One more night, because that one is that's the only city that can build knights. And then everybody else can build glade runners. So we just need to get um, a blacksmith down in one of those cities and then they can start working on glade runners. It's kind of no point in doing it before you get the blacksmith down. Um, I'm going to lock in the aspect of the root and we're going to re research leaf skin. And then we're going to start summoning some entwined protectors. This is this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Our, our army is has been beaten up for so long. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Everyone's dying all the time. But now, finally, we have entwined protectors, and we're probably going to start working on... <sighs> we, we're going to go this way. We're going to go this way. We're, we were so close to Guskeep like four times, and it I because these are athletic, I don't think we can catch them. Um, and so we're just better off trying to go down here and at least clearing the bird nest isn't bad um it'll get us it'll get us some items and i like getting items and hopefully it won't lose us any more units because that's it's just shameful but now at least we have we have the gold necessary to get our academies down and that's gonna be good I mean it would be it would be educational invariably it would still be it would still be pretty shit posty but it would be educational I can promise that much oh oh well um I could recruit a fourth hero I have historically, like, not wanted us to have a fourth hero because I think that they're kind of, like, imbalanced and stuff. But whatever. Like, listen, you come to me with the offer of becoming our fourth hero. How am I supposed to say no? Uh, defense, inspiring leader, and restore. So I guess you can take... Chaos Eater? All of them all of them are called Chaos Eater. You're not allowed to do that. You guys need to come up with a new system of weapon names. New, new system of names here, weapon guy. Let's see. Um, light resistance, lightning, fire, and lightning. What type of damage are these guys dealing? Physical. They're dealing physical. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. All right. We'll have to drive off those n another stack of nonsense guys up there but we can we can do that um because now we are bringing in enough uh gold that i think we can build a glade runner here and then we'll just build a blacksmith after that academy and i think we'll build another glade runner here and do the same thing because once we get the the blacksmith down then then those glade runners will become a lot more reasonable nine turns is you're never going to get that unit out that that is not even worth the gold um but i think i think we're going to fix up that draft pretty pretty darn fast here at least that's the plan 
and we're gonna need we're gonna need Imperium for casting reserves because um, we are not playing as a Wizard King. Therefore, if you do not get casting reserves, you cannot cast anything. For that matter, if you don't get channeling chambers, you kind of can't cast anything either. So we're gonna we're gonna need to do that. We're gonna need to do that. Part of the advantage of getting a lot of extra production early on is that you get your other stuff done pretty quickly. But if you don't keep the uh, the the you know foot on the the gas, then you kind of like give up the advantage to the uh, the factions that actually had like good long term scaling because you're building gold is really inefficient. Uh, do I want you to get 16 food, or do I want you to get 16 food? You are at three turns to academy, you are at one turn to academy. All right, you get two turns to academy. Awesome. Ta-da! We did it, everybody. They said it was impossible. Um, Rampart. Oh, Rampart, that's our new city, and we are growing in population, and that makes sense. All right, good. Everything's great. Everything's coming up Millhouse. So here's a bunch of gold, and here's a bunch of question mark. We are at level six currently, so we're not really level like lined up to gain a level off of this fight. Um, but maybe after both of them, I think I'm gonna take those four. I don't think I want the carrion bird absorbing any exp here carrion carrion birds are not known for being like crazy powerful units they are known for doing what they do um i guess we'll use the other hero to activate the fight because it's just gonna have so much movement with the uh the hunter spider and i don't think we bring anybody else we're 35 exp on this lesser snow spirit I don't think that there's a way that, that it can kill itself here. Well, all right, here's a way that, that, that the game is solving this problem for us. This is one of the the best things to just pick up here. Um, even with our, our mana being as high as it is, I don't really care. Like getting extra mana when we're at the point where we're casting entwined protectors is exactly what we wanna be doing if we're trying to take a, a pretty fast fight with an AI here. Like this is, this is huge in terms of uh, what it's gonna give us it's an extra turn of mana. I the only thing I feel bad about now is that we don't have a blizzard queued up to hit the great bird nest. I do feel bad about that. Um, but I don't think I feel bad enough about it that I'm not gonna make the troops take the fight this turn anyway. Lesser storm, lesser lesser snow spirit. You're you have one job here, and and it is hopefully gonna be an easy one. Your job is to not die in this great bird nest fight. That's it. I don't expect anything else from you. You're just not allowed to die. All right, let's watch this. Let's see if let's see if that those words of encouragement of you're not allowed to die is enough. <laughs> As long as it doesn't die, then it'll turn into a tier three at, after the end of this turn, like for sure. Um, now, a one tier three snow spirit is actually like not enough that it's like oppressive by any means, especially because the AI will tend to like warp it off into the distance and then it'll die. But we 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 are gonna just take a, probably a, a fight with the the enemy ruler sooner or later. Um, at which point, having a snow spirit could be really good. But here, I think I think the snow spirit is gonna violate the the rule that we gave it. I think it is about to. I think it's about to die pretty horribly. Yep, there it is. <laughs> My God! All right, you you could have chosen to not bring the snow spirit to this fight, and that I wouldn't have blamed you. I think that would have been pretty reasonable. I think that would have been pretty reasonable. Just, just like, don't, just Snow Spirit, if you identify that there are enemy bad guys over there that deal super effective damage to you, then go in the opposite direction. That's okay. I, that's alright. I'll allow it. 
at least our 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 hero is going to be like an absolute monster machine whenever we get to a a fight but killing momentum on a, a hero with a tier 4 weapon and infecting it's going to be pretty stupid <laughs> all right bannerman do something bolstered resistance good Okay, all right. Well, at least we took the we took the phoenix down. Good, perfect. And now the defender is coming in and is going to do some damage. And now the phoenix is back. Corrupt soul. The corrupt soul is doing work, but we're not hiring another one. Uh, we got we got an enemy that does super effective damage to this bad boy. Yeah, Rock and Enchantment, they they survive a little better. Um, well, actually, it kind of depends. Like Copper Golems also have a an annoying tendency to just get get killed in every single fight. Um, it they're a, it really depends on what other supporting units you have for them. That's really like the most important thing. Is you you want uh, you want those units to have friends who will watch their back because they will not watch it for themselves. Um, here, I think this is a perfectly good opportunity for us to grab another uh, outpost that we don't have the gold for, so we won't grab it. <laughs> there. <laughs> How's that for a, a breakdown for you? Here, we won't we won't do anything because we don't have any gold. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's actually use the the carrion bird for what it is useful for, which is scouting. Because it, it's flying, it gives you a lot of extra vision. And then, like, if it ends up in a fight um, towards the mid to late game and we can get some value out of it, then great. Uh, well, you know, you know, I wouldn't hate actually picking up another mine here because we are going to wait. Was it? I thought we had a Materium Affinity Governor, but I'm going to guess that we got that unit dead. Holy crap. Our Molby is actually good. While army leader units in army have faithful and zeal, that is not as spooky against these guys in particular, because like everyone's gonna have uh, spirit damage stuff going on on the other side. But that's that is still like faithful and zeal. That's a lot of extra damage. I wondered where the spirit damage was coming from. That makes sense. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else we want to be building right now? Probably not. Hold on, can you build anything useful? Can you? Can you? I guess we could build a level one wizard tower. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, let's build a level one wizard tower. I'm in for it. Wait a second. Did, oh, I'm like, did we just build that in one turn? No, we just built that before uh, wealth that we had queued up because I thought we didn't have the gold for it. Okay, all right, well, that's fine. Um, yeah, that, that's a good place to be. Oh, automatic movement. Let's go here. Yeah, I think if you're if you're interested in using copper golems, um, then you probably do get a lot out of picking up uh, the the Tome of Evolution. It's just that I don't think that copper golems are really the like big selling point for Tome of Enchantment. Tome of Enchantment gives you a pretty solid SPI because it gives you an SPI that gives you tons of extra draft. Draft is like not the most abundant resource in the game, and and it is very important for mid to late game stuff can't believe they took our outpost they came over here and they caused all this trouble for us and then they took our outpost those jerks we'll be back um but like enchantment gives you just a lot of a lot of really good value across the board it's got no ragash what happened our our cool city friend i could have sworn we were outranking you how and there goes our tranquility pool what what the hell happened i thought we were ahead of them on on the uh on the the speed racer thing all right well hmm hmm maybe this is an opportunity for us to go out west and just like conquer ragash out outright 
as our fifth city before we take down the bad guy. Walker, it's like three o'clock. Certainly. Yeah, it's three o'clock. Just, just, all right. It's annoying that we've lost out on Ragash and I, my heart goes out to them, but I think, I think in the interest of doing what we said we were going to do, which is try to get this entire run done in one day, uh, I think we need to kill the enemy. I think that is important. So let's go ahead and buy out our knight. Um, let's go here. Let's go ahead and drop in an entwined protector. And now here we've got um, less than four units. And so we're actually getting like not maximum experience points in terms of value here. But I think that's okay. I think that we're gonna have to just accept that that's the way things are gonna go in this fight. Cause we can't buy rush another another thing in the same uh, the same turn. And I think just like one more one more hero should do it. One more hero should do it. I'm gonna give these guys mana though. Cause like now we're at the point where it just doesn't matter. Like we have infinity mana. And thank goodness we did. Cause you almost got yourself killed, you dummy. But now, fortunately, this level four hero has access to a signature skill. So that is actually a really big deal. And I'm gonna take Blink. Um, I don't think it's gonna matter if we reset, and I think we probably are gonna end up resetting this hero because I don't think we want that as our our level four hero. But having the knowledge that we have Blink for this hero means that this could be a really powerful war hero, uh, warfare hero. Can't believe they took our Cosmoflux, Cosmoflux elixir. Uh, a lot of support for constructs. Yeah, there there is a lot of support for constructs. Tome of the Construct, the tier two tome, is amazing. That's a great, 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 great tome. Um, especially now that that uh, haste is missing on a lot of other stuff. That is another thing that you can do also to make your your knights more durable in auto resolve is take Tome of the Construct. So let's like talk very briefly Tome of the Construct here. Tome of the Construct gives you. Uh, linked Minds, which is going to give you Hyper Awareness, which is going to make it so you're immune to flanking. So this is mostly a, like a tome useful for offensive things through command position, because this is now like one of the most useful AOE uh, haste spells that exists in the game. Um, it's still it's still balanced out by the fact that like you can't this means that your your army does kind of have to be constructs or linked mind units and that that you know precludes quite a lot of powerful mythics being not not uh hasteable off of this spell but like this will still haste you know most things including your your heroes of your races that you've transformed with linked minds and your uh your gold golems and, and whatnot and then defend is really strong simply because it gives you the watchful tag um, and enters defense mode. And then like it's good defensively all on its own. But if you take something like Bulwark, it's even better because it's going to give you the opportunity to, to move and defend in the same turn. Um, so constructs across the board are very, very powerful. But Tome of Enchantment, like even even with a change to uh, purging arrows instead of secret arrows, this is still really good. This is a lot of really good value in terms of scalability of both damage as well as status resistance. That's an important part of the Tome of Enchantment overall, is that if you're trying to play with something that needs to inflict status resistance, then this makes it so that all of your base melee attacks have a 90% chance of inflicting Sunder defense. That also means that your single action attacks, your, it says effects are increased for non-repeating attacks, are automatically gonna Sunder defense regardless of status resistance. So this is just like a really, really great tome on, on that alone. You also get extra res resistance here on all of your shield units, which for like Bastions and the like is amazing in terms of its upgrade. Um, Awakened Tools is also really good in terms of increasing your production in your draft early on. So like, I don't care that much that the Copper Golems die a lot in Auto Resolve. It like, just be aware that they do die a lot in Auto Resolve. Um, it's, it's just sort of like the nature of the, the, the game, I think. I, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I'm going to pick up maybe one more knight out of, out of Heldin actually. Because maybe we aren't going to be able to uh, 
get all the way up into Tyrant Knights if we're just trying to kill this guy here. Because we could, we could go out to Ragash first and then down to the capital, but like, at that point, at that point, might as well just kill the capital. It's right there. You might as well take it, kid. You might as well take it. Shepard is so like yeah, Shepard is one of the the things that if you're trying to work on uh Tome of Enchantment and Copper Golems, Shepard is a big deal. Um yeah, it's Relentless Crusaders is not what you need to be taking uh in order to make like Imperium growth a real part of your build. It's it's just yeah, it's way too slow to get going. It might be interesting in a scenario where you're fighting against like a team and so you're fighting immediately but then you're kind of like also missing out on the grievances aspect of it so like uh it's, it's tough to get good value there it's tough to get good value there all right so we're not going to bring our corrupt soul in against these zealots because they are going to deal spirit damage um yeah you can never have enough imperium and there's just like way better ways to get it than uh relentless crusaders unfortunately for them um so yeah we'll bring you into this fight and I guess we'll assume we're going to get to legendary rank on that bannerman somewhere else. Uh, and yeah, that looks all right. That looks okay. Yeah, we're just going to leave mana on. Like, we just, every every single fight we take here, we're probably never going to run out of mana. Probably. Probably. Yeah, you build an outpost. And then kill this and then plunge. What the hell? What what the heck is this? This looks like another SPI, but like a really cool one. I guess I guess we'll find out what's under there in due time. All right, our ruler finally gets a hat. It's a really cool hat too. Chaos eating mace. Um, let's see. I don't hate endurance training. That's that's pretty solid. But Sentinel is also a, like a big upgrade in terms of your survivability when you have a power weapon, because um, it makes it really painful for people to attack you in melee. Uh, and we are fighting against high, so like resistance is a lot better than it normally would be. But I'm I'm kind of hoping we offset that with just the spirit resistance ability here. I'm going to take one of the Rising Dead on Hermina, so that way if we get into a manual fight, we can use it on our uh, our secondary hero, our Whiteborn. And I think, I think I'm going to take Endurance Training here. I think that we're going to scale our army a little faster than we're going to scale that hero from where we currently are. There's a double chaplains all right no wonder we've just been like dying all the time we've took all the hard fights and left all the easy ones walker you idiot you could have you could have looked to see who was there and then and then when you discovered that it was an easy fight then you could have taken it that's something you could have done you could have done that but here we're gonna get a little more draft um and that's gonna speed up something that is worth speeding up and we are gonna have at least one elite knight so that means that we are gonna have some some heavy cav that can really pressure uh any enemy large units that i'm hoping this this guy has uh, we'll find out like maybe we're gonna have all these this like tech up really good anti-large stuff and then it's gonna be high with like oops all foot awakeners because they are athletic so here, here our uh, extra damage against large is going to be a little worse than it is usually. And I guess, yeah, we could use this as an opportunity to grab the Spring of Youth finally. Finally, finally, finally. Because if we can do that, uh, getting one um, fairy onto the board, or actually we get two fairies because we're going to have enough recruitment points. Yeah, maybe that's what we're gonna do. Maybe that. God damn it, Walker! Did you just pass with casting points open? 
This is where if we were playing a multiplayer, we could just like unclick the end un end turn button. All right, we will have at least two, but now we can take casting reserves. So there's a there's even more casting available to us momentarily. Um, we need to build Wizard Tower two because now after that we can build Channeling Chamber and then and then hopefully we can get like some of these things done like leaf skin and whatnot. Uh, I'm gonna put you on a spider for now, just so you can get to the front, because it looks like they're coming back. It looks like they're coming back over there. Yeah, mercenaries, so like, they're not bad for a uh, tier one, it's just that they are expensive, and like, probably the most important thing about a tier one is just like the cost to combat efficiency ratio. Like, if your units are 10% stronger, but cost 15% more, then you're kind of missing out on it. Like, you don't want to exclusively have low-level low level units that die to everything. That's not good. Um, like, that is that is part of the problem with Feudal. But if you, if you can get low-level units that are high quality, like Industrious and, uh, and Barbarian, then, then it gives you, like, big advantages when it comes to early game clearing and actually like growing your economy by by fighting the board and that that is that is good that's a good place to be all right um we are going to allow the ai to do it's doing yeah it is a shame although i do i still i still go back and forth i don't know if if um triumph intentionally made empire the empire development tree for nature bad or not but if they did, then I don't even know if I disagree with that because there are some really good nature tomes. And if the nature tomes and the nature empire tree were both really powerful, then that could be a problem. Um, and so it, it, I think isn't always a bad thing that, that things aren't balanced that way, but it's, it's complicated because like things should feel good and the nature uh, empire tree doesn't feel good. It feels like it's like it's a lot worse than the other things that you could have access to. And guess what? In reality, it is. All right, so that's a cute shield. Um, we're not going to use it, though, because we are going to have killing momentum here. And I think uh, I think it's time to reset Moldy, actually. Moldy, here is your lightning mortis. I hope you have a really nice time with your lightning mortis. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this thing a, an archery killing machine. And people will say, you can't do that. You can't, this is, you're gonna hear from my lawyer. And they're right, I am gonna hear from their lawyer. And it was scary and I felt pretty bad about it. Um, and then there we go, got a lot of damage on this hero. And now we could come back and pick up fighting and defense, but like I kind of don't care because now we have killing momentum and fire mage lock. This is stupid and is gonna look really dumb because um, it kind of is, and that's okay. Like I think that's part of the experience too, that that you get access to really powerful things in in Age of Wonders Four. Um, oh, it's, whoa! You're thinking. Uh, Mighty Meek nonsense. Yeah, Mighty Meek, not not where you want to be. Not where you want to be, unfortunately. It is it is not good. Lord of Magic. Wait a second. Oh, right. You don't actually have a Lord spot yet, because everybody else is dead. Everybody else is dead, the video game. Um... But wait, we still have we still have two level ups on Moldy the Inspiring, so I guess we should add some stuff some stuff to make uh, Moldy more durable. So I think defense is pretty good on that front, um, and Sentinel is also not bad when it comes to just keeping yourself alive because it does let you do first strike, uh, and and first strike when you're doing you know this much damage is is pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, all right, I'm in for it. We're gonna we're gonna have mostly a ranged weapon here in Moldy the Inspiring, but by the time you get this jacked as a hero, that's when um, ranged weapons really start taking off. You probably still are gonna want a good a good uh, lance. So let's let's make a lance. 
Let's make a lance. Let's get rid of this piercing crossbow. Uh, summoning, fl uh, summoning flora staff. All of these staves. Get, get out of here. You guys, get these staves out of here. It's crazy. I, these are the same weapon. These are the same weapon dressed up in a trench coat. I'm just gonna disenchant the brittle hammer because we have uh, another tier two. Um, and I guess I'm gonna disenchant the hindering staff because we're not gonna use that. We unfortunately lost the tranquility pool because we got we got got by the bad guy. Um, but this is fine. We can still we can still make a pretty good a pretty good lance. Let's make a pretty good lance. We're gonna throw lightning damage on there again, and um, unsurprisingly, we are not able to pick up wet because it was attached to tranquility pool. No, and we also can't take up the uh, life steal. No, oh my god, we got so got by by dropping that. That's huge. Does that mean that we still want to build a um, a lance here? I think probably. Lances are, are very good at, at doing damage. Um. Oh, and we can still inflict frozen. That's pretty good. And because this is the the you know single hit, it's a sixty percent chance instead of uh, thirty. Sixty instead of thirty is a lot better. Uh. And you know what? Sundered resistance is sort of, sort of like wet if you squint. We have Retaliator, Critical Hit Chance, Animal Slayer, Bleeding, and Status Vulnerability. I'm gonna take Status Vulnerability, because Status Vulnerability, you know, if you can if you can start applying enough Status Vulnerability and make things uh, impossible for people to defend, then that's pretty good. But more importantly, we just have a, a really beefy weapon here. You know, 18 damage across the board is gonna be pretty good at increasing the damage output on our ruler. So right now we got a weapon that's at, it says 26 here, but that's because of the uh, the extra damage from our, our attacks, our fighting plus one or whatever. We'll see, we'll see what we have when our new weapon comes off the, the press. It should be a lot better. Yeah, it, it is pretty underwhelming right now, but it's because it doesn't have the, um, the modifiers in place. Once the modifiers come in, then it'll be better. All right, let's, let's repair that, that uh, research post. We're working on that. We lost a forester. Rampart needs, I think, another another quarry. Guys, you cannot do this. Either either capture the city or go home. You cannot keep just skirting around the, the edge of this this battlefield. I'm not gonna allow it. Right, this, I'm gonna confirm, yes, that is in, in fact their capital, good. So let's see if we can find, oh yeah, the, the T1, tier ones, even even with all the, the buffs in the world, they're still not gonna, not gonna give you the stats that you're looking for. Where the hell is their ruler? Cause that's, the, that is gonna be the, uh, the big problem here is that we have not encountered the ruler. I don't think we've even fought them once and we've died three times. So like we're not as far ahead as, as we should be. I don't think we're going to take this fight this turn though. Okay. That's almost certainly where they are because if they're taking a seal fight, their ruler has got to be there. So yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's pull these guys back. We'll drive them off, fight the enemy ruler and then, uh, see what we're, where we're going from there. I don't think there's like a specific benchmark in terms of stats, but you do need your com you do need your units to like accomplish specific things. Um, like if you have a like a really bulky shield unit, then it should probably be a really bulky unit and not just a unit that looks bulky on stats but has really really low defense or resistance or something like that and then dies. Because like you want the the units to be good from a user uh inter interface standpoint we could have taken that fight before we we ran our units away um and maybe that would have been the right thing to do but that's okay it's, i want to i want to get into a fight at the very least with that bad guy over there before before eileen gets home or before i have to before i have to pause for today because i i really did think that we were going to get this done in one day 
and then and then did not did not manage our time efficiently did not manage our time efficiently all right let's go here let's go here I think we can drop in another entwine protector up front let's get let's get a third yeah skeleton pull arms I mean the, you you can get a lot of HP on them it's just that they're they're defenses and resistances are are not um typically going to be enough to make them worth bringing like they especially in, in a multiplayer scenario people just do so much damage to them through fire and, and spirit that it's not even funny uh oh no wonder we have so much mana because we're running like all these conduits walker like that's very cute that you want to give all these jobs to to conduit farmers but think of the children good lord think of the children um let's see we could take scrying uh we took glade runners let's see i mean like a still ubiquitously useful thing is revelry because revelry does have access to the like scald and blood fury weapons and so this is going to make it so that our, our uh, knights will do meaningful more damage, a meaningful more, amount more damage. Um, and Tome of the Construct does offer us the opportunity to do linked mines and therefore keep our knights from uh, getting chewed through with backstabs. I want to save mists for later so that way we can just like show that off. I'm going to take, I'm going to take Tome of the Inquisition, not necessarily because it's like good but because i think that having uh inquisitors marks on glade runners sounds like it'll be fun um and 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 it's my party and i can do what i want to uh so i'm gonna lock in inquisitor the more that you want the early things that that show up like the later on you get into the game the more you need to start locking them because like eventually you're gonna have a giant queue of spells that you haven't researched and whenever you unlock a new a new tome like you'll see only stuff from the new tome but then after that every research after that you're gonna have like a random assortment of stuff and that means that if you don't lock things in on the first technology that it'll shuffle everything in and then you have to like click research three different times just to find one new spell off of your new tome of after a certain point so just locking spells becomes really really good oh no are we gonna lose rampart and then we're we're the battle is gonna have to be us relieving rampart oh man are we gonna have a bunch of stacks over there against like 12 random units because everybody died that could be funny that could be the way that we end this stream in one day as we die brutally i i think that feudals so inquisitors aren't great they're really good at doing damage that is what they are great at um they are still pretty fragile but they did get plus 10 hp plus one uh defense and plus one resistance on the patch like two turns ago um and that made a big difference in terms of their their like viability defensively they're still kind of not what an order mage needs which is the the biggest problem um because like an order mage needs access to uh frontline durability and that is not an inquisitor but you know it, it still does it still does do put in work uh and i think i think that deserves that deserves some some recognition the inquisitors are a lot better than they used to be that much is absolutely true all right so what do we actually have here we have we have 13 units to go in against like 16 17 20 26 28 units we're like outnumbered two to one that's okay if we're gonna if we're gonna manual fight these guys i think that's fine um blacksmith do i want to build anything else here uh, i guess i could build an armory for even faster production on these glade runners that we may end up not needing all right uh yeah i'm here for it let's let's see what we get 
let's let's see how this goes. And we'll do a tithe shrine. So we need to we need to get over to Rampart before it gets annexed by the enemy. That's the that's the point where like it becomes a lot more costly to take it back because that's where the uh, Imperium cost actually comes back onto board, and we do not want that. Um, our ruler could be providing experience points though, and should. Yep, you get you get a little bit of training, you get a little bit of training. You get a little bit of training. All of a sudden, all those guys are going to get a lot more training. Um, I guess I guess nobody else is coming down before before we have to take this fight, except maybe the Glade Runners. So we probably want to save the the gold, and I guess we'll bring the the Carrion Bird back home. Like if the Carrion Bird gets to participate in this fight, then the the Carrion Bird gets to participate in that fight. There's Rampart, so now it should be, unless they took, oh no, they, if they have nature one, if they have nature one, then they're going to absorb Rampart, like, early enough that it's going to be actually a problem. Because we don't really have time to get a blizzard off here either. We can get a snow spirit into this stack, that seems like something that we could add. Um, 32. Do we have just enough to... B five gold. We have five gold. And this outpost fortunately does not have uh, walls, which means that our guys can reinforce from out of it. Um, we do not have the casting points to pick up Aspect of the Root or Signet of Knighthood, so we're going to need to fight this without those. But I think this will be a fun way to, to end this this uh, this stream. I think that basically, I think that Druidic Terraformers is worth playing around with. I think that there are absolutely some things that can make um, Druidic Terraformers work uh, pretty well. It seems like they'll be really good for High, because um, High does just have like enormous flat economy at the beginning of the game. And so seeing how it plays out there should be pretty interesting. And I do think that the changes for food are pretty favorable for um for high in particular just because it was already pretty good at generating food and and just did so incidentally even when food was like not good and food is a lot better now um but unfortunately for feudal feudal is not a lot better now just food but i think I think we'll I think we'll have a pretty reasonable time here of things regardless. Should we restart reset Hermina Taylor? I no, don't reset Hermina Taylor. Just take this fight. Just go do this fight. Just take the the five the three strongest. There's a a thousand. We'll take this one. We'll take a fight with the the ruler. And that'll be a fun place to end the stream. Um let's go you here and you here and now we get another entwined protector which you are not a defender of any kind oh this is all oh, right this is our dude who i guess can have the chaos eater tier four weapon yeah that's fine that's that's good enough um spirit resistance is going to be pretty good against high and then I guess you'll take uh, the Zealot weapon just because it's there. And uh, I'm going to kick the Defender out of our main party because now we want to just get the best things in this group that we can. He says, and then has a Brewer Ogre with four movement. All right. Brewer Ogre. And I guess we'll leave the Bannerman with us, and then we'll uh, regroup here. And I'll put a Glade Runner in this group. And 
and then Holy, the the high rank knight in that group. Yeah, that's the best that's the best use of those resources. And then we'll drop uh, an entwined protector down here. And then uh, we'll have a nice fight. Says it's going to be a risky battle. This this is going to be fun though. We have on our side uh, three heroes, so I I suspect that it's going to be a pretty easy fight. Although. You know, our, our heroes are in, in meaningfully worse shape due to having some issues in the early the early phase of the game. And we can't even use um, a blizzard here before this fight. Like, the only thing we could do to add extra strength to our board here would be to summon a lesser snow spirit. Which, I mean, I guess we're going to be fighting against some low tier units. So, like, I don't even hate that. I think that's okay. The higher tier units that you have on the enemy side, the more you need to be concerned about bringing low tier, like, chaff, effectively. But we didn't manage to get to level 8 on our on our ruler. S spent too much time dead in the, uh, in the danger zone. I have had games where, where, like, you don't have that issue. It's just, like, I think that Feudal's early game largely depends on getting some uh, early setups that, that we did not get, you kind of need a good early game, uh, like, a, a early game clearing when it comes to auto-resolves, and if you don't get that, then you're in much worse shape. Alright, but here, here, they are in much worse shape. Jesus, like, what's your AI? You're gonna get toasted. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out ways for us to productively get our units towards the enemy. The biggest thing that you always need to be aware of is what sort of AOE effects your opponent has and the range that they can use them at. So go ahead and identify the most dangerous pieces of their, their team. In this case, it's absolutely the Awakeners. The Awakeners can do some real, some real work with exposing light. Um, and it looks like Basically, we can't get units uh, forward on the left, like, basically at all, based, based off of where the coverage for these double Awakeners are. And then this Awakener, I'm going to guess, yeah, clear, clears most of this other stuff. So we can move up to around here um, in terms of where our units can move naturally, and then up to around here without being exposed to their artillery fire. And you can do this in, in multiplayer as well, and you, you probably should, but because it's going to mean that now we know we can go here as well, um, and there's no natural AoE exploitation available to the enemy. When there is natural AoE exploitation, you need to be careful about how close you clump your units, but when there isn't, then that's actually an opportunity for you to spread stuff out, uh, or to, to spread stuff out in a pseudo way and use things like shield wall to clear your approach because that's something you would like to do if you can shield your approach you should um here we're just gonna move our glade runners in that's fine and i think that tree was out of range yes the tree was out of range and i don't think the tree was in range to get attacked by the bronze golem no although the fact that they are on uh like potential haste is a little scary here because they do have linked mines. You can see that with that little like linking chain thing between them. They've gone into Tome of Construct. They have com linked mines and compounding defense. So they might have a way to haste their entire army here, in which case um, moving this hero up is not like great value, but it is at least a, um, a bulwark hero. So that's going to give us the opportunity to bring a knight in. And, or a, a shield wall hero and then shield wall it and that's preserved the HP for later our snow spirit is probably just gonna harass this side um, it has access to freezing burst which means that it's gonna do the most work it can against units that have low status resistance and this is where the enemy has most of their tier 1 units so just putting it over there is good value um, I guess we could try to get a mana unchained off here. That's, that could be pretty good. We got, we got some tier threes. Can we get mana unchained onto the other hero? We can get it onto the other hero. All right, I'm here for it. 
I am here for it. So in Mana Unchained, this is this is the uh, astral ability that utilizes like just doing damage. I think the best. Blink, Blink is strong, um, but this might be stronger. It's annoying that the Bannerman here is only going to hit some of these guys. Maybe we... I don't know, it's just such a low cooldown. This is the only ability that the Bannerman have, so we must, we must use it effectively. I guess I'm going to go ahead and just use Mana Enchained from this tile. I'm okay with that. It's a lot of extra damage for the short skirt, like, next two rounds, so we need to engage in the next two rounds. Or, rather, we need to engage next round, because um, we're missing out on the first one here. Uh, I think you can go here, and you go here, and then you go here, and then we're getting slightly better value. And we could even... I could even sprint. Yeah, that can sprint. Because we need to get as much value out of these Bannermen as we can. And getting three resistance against, uh, like, high over there is actually a, a great way to get value. It's fantastic. Oh. Oh, oh boy, they can get five resistance because they that one can actually travel to both parties. Well, well, Knight, well, you are going to have a nice time. I can't promise you that anybody else on this team is going to have a nice time, but you are going to have a nice time. Hello, Pico. Uh, yeah, you're going to walk on the keyboard, huh? All right, well, that's that makes sense. All right, let's go here. Let's uh, let's get our bolster off, and then we will gain our frigid belch. And now it was it was like right here, so we need to actually move one tile back out of the way. Um, oh no. Pico, get out of there. All right, so we need to go here. And then we need to go like here or something like that to get out of the way of, of these bad boys, right? Yeah, that, that looks about right. And then, and then you know, we're not gonna do the AI thing and just like point our butts in the wrong direction. We will, we will attempt to face at the enemy in so much as it is possible. But now, like, we're going to present opportunities to the enemy to exploit AoE, but there are a couple of things when it comes to that. First, not all AoE exploitation is, is the same. Like, if somebody uses um, something on you that causes weakened in an AoE, that's annoying, but it's not going to end a fight. Whereas, like, if we can get the AoE to, or the enemy to just uh, go in and dive on this Grimby Crow, then I think we're going to be in pretty good shape um, in terms of being able to fight out the rest of the fight. And so, like, just just be aware of the value of the things that you're including in an AoE clump and the danger presented, like, what sort of units can actually exploit it. Because here there's, there's nothing. Nothing is in range to actually hit us with AoE stuff except for their spells. And if they're doing that, then they're committing spells uh, early on in a fight and that gives us the opportunity to respond productively. All right, you go here, and you go here, and our, our heavy cav is gonna flank. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do some flanking. I think that's it. I think everybody else is just defending. Yep, that's what it looks like. So what we're gonna try to do here is overwhelm um, this this right flank because that's where all of their weakest units are and that's just like where the terrain dictated that most of our guys could go eric rex is moving oh no hastened oh no <laughs> there it is so it's a good thing that we got a lot of people in in uh defense mode because we're about to get chomped
yeah, having like really inexpensive tier, tier ones um, in a in some fights, it can be a big difference. The thing is, is that like broadly, you want units that actually scale pretty well, and the um, tier one units do not scale particularly well. And so, like investing a lot of resources in terms of draft early on, really just doesn't pay you off because um, all that stuff just drops, just drops so fast. All right, so they're gonna do all this fancy handy dandy notebook stuff, but if this is what they're doing on this side, they are gonna have a really bad time because we do have double knights over there, double knight gum. Hey, got poisoned and everything. Okay, so now they have moved in uh, their Awakeners on that side. These Awakeners are still here. So this is actually a really, a really good AI behavior. I don't know if this is an accident or not, but it is a really good AI behavior. They've, they've held back one piece of artillery, so that way it's gonna be hard for us to like necessarily grab them all um like with just one unit in terms of adjacencies and so this thing can cover like anyone who's trying to come in to disrupt this one which is like the really dangerous one because this one now has the ability to essentially aoe whatever it wants to um we're gonna we're gonna fix that here in just a second but it that is a dangerous part of their their tool um, their tool set here, and so we might need to do something about that. We might need to, I need to remove that awakener before it gets an opportunity to chew through an army. Well, in that case, let's find out what we got. So we have mark of invulnerability, we have call to glory, and we have ice coffin. Ice coffin is going to be the thing that's going to give us the most value if we want to just freeze that awakener and clear for everybody else to come in. That might be where we go. Um, that's that's not an inherently unreasonable thing to do. Uh, but I think what we'd rather be doing is disrupting this Awakener with, with melee stuff. So is there a way for us to do that? Is there a way for us to do that? So if we shoot this guy with a bow, there's a 60% chance to slow. This is where Glade Runners do benefit a lot from having more units, or more unit enchantments at least. I guess we'll send the Grimby Crow here um, that p p pulls off one, <laughs> one retaliation off of that guy. Wow. All right, but we got the blind on their Awakener. And that means that this thing is gonna do a lot less damage with Spirit Bolts, and because it's adjacent to someone, it's not gonna be, able, until, it, until they kill this thing, they're not gonna be able to use the uh, the exposing light and if we can get another unit like there for some reason then I, th I think we can get get it through so we need to kill this uh is what it boils down to and it, god this thing is so bulky this is crazy seven defense where's your damage feudal where is your damage all right so you do have oh you don't have stand together because we didn't even get signets down so there's no point in trying to get those guys together. It's just the the knights. Yeah. This might be um this might be a uh, time for us to blink, honestly. Like if if I can't come up with another way for us to get something adjacent to this awakener other than the the crow, then blink looks like the best thing for us to do. And we could even use that as an opportunity to consume chaos if we can get enough enough debuffs on these guys because consume chaos can do a lot of damage let's see if we can do some more debuffs i guess do we want to chew through the shield wall though no we want to we want to chew through their back line that's that's where that's where this these night pair this knight pair can do the most damage just going straight up here. So we are going to um, move them up to stand together. So that way they get a little bit extra damage that way. Uh, can we get them to the point where they can kill these things if we strengthen them? Probably not. We don't have a strengthened here, do we? We have one strengthened. That's not enough. All right. So we'll hit you with a charge strike. 
And I guess we'll also hit you with a charge strike. And we will run you up all the way to the front. And I guess we'll just harass you and see if we can do anything. Because now all of these units, because they're all ranged, are going to have to disengage. So that is a big problem for them. Um, and you, I guess... I guess... I guess we could use a web here. That seems really dumb. It might be better to just shield wall, honestly. Yep, it might, it might, it might come down to that. It might come down to that. Because this is just solo damage in terms of, of really what we're getting out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to mark you. And then we need to be one tile closer to mark. But if we're one tile closer, then we can't do this. And this is a lot more damage. So let's go this way. Yes, they have. this thing has the uh, resistance to physical attacks through reinforced, but this is still going to be like the best in terms of value for us. It's going to remove... Well, it's going to remove Hastened. Not going to remove any any units there, um, but we'll get those on the next, the next attack, I think. And you go to Hastened Remove. Hmm. Okay, all right. Willa does enough damage here that I think actually... Yeah. Oh yeah, all right, we're getting, we're, we're getting there. We're getting up there in terms of the, uh, the Chaos Eater. Let's see what else we can do to apply obnoxious bonuses. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna consume Chaos something. Um, this does look like a pretty reasonable place for us to go. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else we can do to apply even more, um, debuffs first. Because this is, like, Sunder Defense, for instance, and that's, that's a nice little, a nice little bonus. Uh, here's, here's another thing that we could do. We could just, we could just throw a Banner of Healing right here. I don't even hate doing that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Soothing standard on four is whatever. Um, you are not close enough to do that attack, but we are close enough that we could go run straight up to their face and defend right next to this first strike retaliation legendary daylight spear. Yeah, I'm doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move adjacent to this Awakener. So now that Awakener cannot use this uh, Exposing Light until this unit is dead or if it gets out of out of AoE, or out of uh, access. And then we're going to go ahead and try to use Frozen on this guy. Um, probably should have done that first, but whatever. Like, you're not my real dad. Um, and now we've gotten this unit in a defensive posture covering this so it can't use its AoE attack. And then I'm gonna ch charge in here and smash the uh, the archer. Hey Jonathan, how's it going? Yeah, so we got that out of the way. And now I think what we're gonna do, let's see if we can use a, f a frigid belch productively on one of these guys. I think I think a frigid belch freezing um, a daylight spear that deals a million damage is almost certainly going to be worth our time. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Good, frozen, frozen. This is what we wanna see. So now we're, we're gonna need to get a position where we can use uh, our mage lock and killing momentum and kill th probably this dust hunter and then take another shot at something. Um, but we can do that actually probably pretty easily with jump. So if we jump to here, I think that that is a good enough angle that we'll probably have a reasonable accuracy on our on our mage lock. I think that's probably reasonable. Like, I just want to see a 90% chance here, and I, I cannot imagine we're not going to see it. 80, 80 is a little less than I wanted. Don't miss. 
All right, did not miss. And because we have the infected ability, now we have another decaying zombie. <laughs> yes. Um, and now we have a fire mage lock that we could fire. Oh man. I guess we could we could try to assassinate the ruler, but I think we're gonna have a much better and much easier time trying to take out um, that guy. So can we can we can we actually take that down if we do? Right. That could apply wet, which could set us up to kill with our consume chaos. Because that is, if we can kill that with a uh, an infecting and turn it into a decaying zombie under our control, then I, like, they are in a lot of trouble if that is what we can do. Let's find out. Okay, so we got that poisoned. Um, do we have any, anybody? Do we have anybody who can get over there to inflict anything on them? I don't think so. All right, well, it was a, it was a heady dream. Minus three morale. Minus three morale. Uh, I think we need to defend with our entwined protectors here. Um, both for the, the shield wall for the brewer ogre, but also just because like the, a daylight spear with awakened is like deals 27 damage. I mean, part of that is that they have a major advantage and we do have the minor handicap, but like they are capable of doing a lot of damage here. That is, of course, also like a, an indirect part of the uh, the experience here with our, our feudals. But whenever we play like a stronger faction, um, you'll you'll notice that we we can usually get away with uh, the current settings without it being a problem. I could get, if I am willing to become poisoned and be and become adjacent to a. a Cop or a bronze goal, and then we can get close enough that we can shoot the awakener. That cannot be worth it. Sorry, buddy. It's annoying that it's uh, mostly non physical damage coming off of the corrupt soul, and that was lowered resistance or lower defense rather than resistance, but that's okay. It's the way it goes. Uh, Moldy the Inspiring. Moldy the Inspiring. Bueller, Bueller. Bueller. I guess I guess this is okay because this I'm pretty sure is going to allow the uh, the chaos eating to do the chaos eating before the wet gets removed. Pretty sure. Oh, it removed the wet itself because what? Why? Oh, because it's on fire. Why is it? Why are you on fire? Well, I don't know why you're on fire, but. Now, now everything is worse. I guess we will chaos eat anyway, though, because it is just going to do a lot of damage. And that's that's the strength of that item. Um, and I guess here, first strike retaliation is really just not what we're not what we're looking for. We have a raise undead, but I think I think what we're going to need to do is just accept that. This is going to take all of the uh, retaliation attacks. And this is going to do none of the damage. 14 damage. Oh, we didn't actually finish our tier 4 weapon before we took this fight, did we? No. That is why we're doing zero damage to these guys. Is that worth taking? It should remove a model if it gets below half, but I don't think it's going to get... Well, no, it will get below half. So yeah, that'll, that'll be worth it, because it'll reduce the damage output on this thing. Yep, there it is. So whenever there's like multi um, unit models, then if you can, or multi model units, if you can remove some of the, the units, it'll be really good for you in terms of the survivability of the rest of your army by just reducing the damage output from them. All right, good. Thank goodness we, we jammed that hero there to cover the Awakener. Because indeed, they did not wait for it. And God, the Giant Slayer is just putting in so much work here. Legendary, uh, like, double-advantaged 
spears do a lot of damage. They do do a lot of damage. No! That entwined thrall just needs like two more HP, and then it would have been able to get off its own heal. But I think I think this is still a pretty good position for us to be in, because this this flank is in rough shape from them. Why are they all on fire? What did I do that set all of them on fire? What can leave claw marks in solid stone? Yep, they're running away and then provoking retaliation attacks from our knights. And that's usually pretty bad. That's usually pretty bad. All right, so you, we need to either kill this vampire spider hatchling or just walk away. Um, and I'm not opposed to just walking away. That's, that is certainly something that we can do. All right, so what, what can we do about this middle here? We've got um, a soothing banner, which could could be worth it, but it would probably require us to do something like this and pull the defender back, and therefore pull a, an attack off of the daylight spear. Um, and you know that's okay. I'll, I'll do that. Like the, we're taking the we're taking the retaliations onto this defender, which is not an important part of the the combat, um, and leaving it so that those retaliations are not there for more important attacks. Uh, and the soothing standard, I don't think, is going to hurt either. I'm gonna give those guys a little bit more in terms of real survivability. Uh, you could deal twenty four damage. I don't hate that. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, let's go for it. So we got us slowed, and once we get enough slowed, then the retaliations are just gone. Um, one is not enough. We could kill. We could kill the awakener here, though. I like that. Let's just take the awakener out, because now we get extra value um, in terms of increasing our morale from killing stronger units. And that means that if we can move here and take this guy out with a mage lock, not only does this give us the killing momentum and give us a, another zombie, but again, that's another high tier unit. So we've lost one so far, they've lost three. And the more high tier units that we can pick off, uh, the more the morale is gonna become a problem for everybody else who's still on the field. That means, of course, that like you do also kind of not get as much um, from killing low tier units that, as you used to. This is a, a new change, but I think it's one that's positive. Boy, th for a tier four weapon, most of the weapon on this the this thing is the Chaos Eater itself. Burning slowed in status of vulnerability though is at least something, um, and that's a tier two. So I guess I'm gonna go for the support here just to try to get that thing off the board. Can you kill? You can kill. Oh no, you can't kill that one? Really? Can you? Ah, you can. So why does this one get it and that one doesn't? This one has star blades and that one doesn't. So pay attention to what, what options you got available to you. In this case, we actually had a, an extra kill by just moving different units in different directions. Um, yeah, we'll do this. We'll go go take that, that archer out, because this is just a melee strike for 11. Boom. And now we can maybe freeze? I don't even hate that. There's no zone of control also out of this guy because it's a uh, an archer unit. So even though we didn't get it, now there's kind of like nowhere for this archer to go. Um, this is one of the one of the problems with ranged units. Where is this archer supposed to go? The archer could try to walk this way. That's its best bet. Uh, but it, that would provoke one retaliation attack from the snow spirit. 
Uh, and if it tries to walk too far this way, it gets into like being adjacent to that knight. So we've kind of killed that unit even without having to kill it. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's see. These, these daylight spears. So these daylight spears are driving me crazy. How are we supposed to kill them? I mean, I guess we could use Steadfast. Um, do we have anything else that we can do to affect the board over there? We could start charging down all of the uh, support units too, because we do have that wide and wide and awake. Slowed. I actually don't hate this. I think I think this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw slowed on here. Um, cause we're gonna remove, again, just like another retaliation off of the Staylight Spear, and that's a big part of the, th the threat that it's applying to us, are those retaliations. And we can't remove it with our charge, cause that is not part of the game. Um, this one's annoying, but that is a combat summon. I guess this is fine. I guess this is fine, he says, and then audibles into going over there i just what i'm what i'm really afraid of are the uh the awakeners themselves because they remain just like the most dangerous and i just don't i don't think we have a way to disrupt this one this this turn unfortunately i don't think we have a way to like get a unit onto it um which is what you need in order to stop them he says and then checks and then corrupt soul can get there because of pass through all right so let's do a frozen here. Yes, good. And now we can go here. This will this will provoke another retaliation from this guy, and it's spirit weak, and it's going to do a lot of damage. Blah 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 blah. And apparently not because maybe this can't be out of retaliations. Oh, it's because this has ethereal and pass through. I'm sure. Yeah, Maya, I'm, I appreciate it. I think I think this is going to be a fun thing. I don't think we're going to do a lot of manual fights against the AI like in the future, um, but maybe maybe like once per stream that might be something that we do. But I do really intend to like do a, like one single player stream uh, probably a week for the immediate future because I'm having a really lot, just a lot of fun with the game right now, and I don't see any reason to not like experience that with with the the channel like why why would i play the game and enjoy the game and not do that on the channel i have a channel you, you can do that too walker it's like it's kind of what that's what the channel is supposed to be for i think <laughs> all right um there's a way to apply a lot of mark to that that doesn't make any dif difference at all in terms of the damage output here and makes no difference here either and this has spirit resistance why is this taking so much less damage that makes no sense that makes no sense how are you taking more damage from that that hit um but now now we can kill this thing with our uh frost weakness icy boy one icy boy Okay, that's good. That means that now I guess I'm pretty happy going here and just defending from this position um, to add shield wall to everybody and then doing the same thing here, sort of, except that I'm going to do healing sap um, mostly. It's only on one one unit, so like you obviously get like a lot more in terms of defensive value by pulling that defender back here to get the HP immediately. But yeah, the ogre just like just brick housed that that thing. I cannot believe how much damage that ogre did actually. That was that was impressive. And here we still have I guess a bannerman. Is there anyone that we need to like we just disrupted these guys over and over and over again. Their awakeners have been they, if we had not been disrupting them, we would have been in a lot of goddamn trouble because Awakeners really do uh, a lot of damage, um, especially when they have the, the double buff going on, little double double buff gum. 
I guess I'm gonna do the resistance here. Probably doesn't make a difference. I think this thing is gonna chew through those guys in one turn anyway, but the spirit weakness just got offset a lot by throwing a bunch of uh, bolster resistance on there. And if it can, if we can make it so that it doesn't die in one turn of auto attacks, then that would actually be great. And here, um, I guess I could just go straight in on this guy because this is not a, a a summon. This is an actual unit that's here on this fight. So if we can kill that, then it's gonna continue impacting morale and nine defense. Oh, we're gonna lose two of that because that is from shield warded but we do we do still have bolster resistance five do we do we have that at the i think we have that at the end of, of this turn and then it'll remove at the beginning of the next turn i i hope i'm right about that if i'm wrong about that i feel very dumb all right good i am right about that so now we have infinite resistance for whatever the support units want to do Oh no, they killed our they killed our uh, little snow spirit that we added in on that combat. It's okay. The snow spirit was there to die. Don't 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 do it. Don't do it. Don't kill don't kill my corrupted soul. I know that you're high and that I brought something that's weak to to spirit against you, but don't do it. That's be very rude and we wouldn't invite you back. Okay, all right, so they are they are whomping those guys. Did we do it? Did the Corrupted Soul make it? The Corrupted Soul made it. Also, the Corrupted Soul had Steadfast Walker. Why are you worried about that? Like, do you read the text that's on your screen? Do you? Because I'm, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Um, all right, let's see. Is there a way for us to productively kill this because if we can if we can kill this then we can probably get these guys just back there onto the awakeners which is even better than freezing them if you can get a knight onto an awakener that's pretty good that's pretty good uh let's see you are gonna get completely demolished fighting against that hero if you're not careful so instead of doing that let's be careful let's get creative All right, so that we can't get above 80% chance to hit. Why can't we get above 80% chance to hit? What did we do to offend you? Because if we could kill that with our, with our mage lock gun, then the crowd would go wild. Then my mom would be proud of me. If we could kill that with a mage lock gun, my mom would be proud of me. So we should be able to do it. Um, from here, 50, I guess we could just like plow into this thing with with uh ranged attacks and then and then it is killable with this and then um then this is our follow-up shot with killing momentum but like i don't even know if i care that much about turning that into a zombie i feel like this is a much better thing to turn into a zombie they might have the thing that's making them harder to hit with racial, but they're probably, yeah, it's just obscured. Uh, there's there's a unit in the way, and there's not really a way for me to get around that unit. Not without, not without sacrificing the ability to do a ranged attack. Now, fortunately, this is supposed to be doing 31 damage against 31 HP, uh, but unfortunately that means that it can't really get there if it grazes, so we really need to... We, we really need to come up with a way to do a little bit more damage than that, or to just pre-slap it around with something else. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do an ice coffin on the daylight spears. Yes, because those are gonna be obnoxious. So now, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna do a couple of melee strikes into this guy. And you are not close enough to get anywhere that isn't. Oh, all right, well, tell you what, this this ogre can't go anywhere uh, other than hitting this thing anyway. 
and yeah, we can we can try to. Well, the thing is that I kind of want to get the I want to get the the unit here. That's where I want to get it. Um, I think this is I think this is fine as long as we don't like out, outright miss on this shot, then we're fine. Yep, cool. All right, so now we go here. Uh, and we do a little flanking on these invincible legendary daylight spears. And we do a shot here. Slowed wet. All right, cool. And then we do a frost weakness charge. Yep. And we do another Frost Weakness Charge. And now we've removed two of their Awakeners. And now, because we've been focusing on tearing apart their their high value units, their, uh, their morale is starting to collapse. And I think that's a really big upgrade that they've made it so that now you can't just do that by killing their low value units. I think that was really annoying whenever that was like a big part of the game. It was a big part of the game and like, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a part of it, and if you don't, if you did not interact with that, then, you know, that's the way it goes. But now, 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 things are not looking so spicy for these guys. Now things are looking a little. Now things are looking a little, a little. You know what I mean? They're looking a little, a little. But like, if we, if we were to defend here, I guess actually that wouldn't even be terrible. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think a, a defend on that spot is defensible. Ha 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 ha. Um, and then I think we're gonna use you to do a little more punishing damage on. Oh, this doesn't have enough uh, slowed. So we yeah we can do do here. Slow you. All right. Well, that's fine. Sundered defense is, I think, the new hotness. I think that's what we're. I think that's what all the the young hip young people are into. Put comment below if you are are a hip young person into sundered defense. If that's if that's what floats your boat. There we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here, because now we're gonna start trying to um, do what we can to chase these off with morale problems without threatening like the loss of our our, uh, our board here. Oh no, we couldn't get Walker. Did you manage an awakener all game long only to like stop managing it on the literal last turn where it could use an attack? Is that what you did? Cause that's, that is what it looks like. That is what that looks like. Embarrassing. You just, you just, you just embarrassing. You just embarrassing yourself. All right, um, let's go here. Let's just start charging down these melee guys. Bam. You can uh, launch an attack here, but if we stand a guy in the way then that's not the case anymore and if we get a crit and we kill this thing which we won't um yeah then we can break away with no problem it's okay look you you're you're wildly overestimating how much damage you're going to take from this this attack walker if you think that that you can't move a an entwined protector here and just shield wall this And I suppose that this guy is frozen, and therefore we should attempt to put damage onto it while we can. I can't believe I can't believe I did that. I mean, I can believe I did that because it is like very normal skill issues. But God damn it, Walker! Like that. This is this is exactly the sort of AOE opportunity that that I wanted to avoid offering to the enemy. 
tried to manage all combat, and then just like, and then just like, it was lazy, just lazy. Like, it could've, I could've walked all the way over there. I could've walked into that zone of control. Why don't you walk into that zone of control, Walker? Why aren't you more like your brother? He would've walked into that zone of control and then not lost the corrupted soul. He's an actuary. <laughs> what are you talking about, Walker? <laughs> but uh, you, we're gonna win this. We are gonna, we're gonna have a lot more, like, incidental losses of stupid stuff than we probably needed to do, but we are gonna win this fight, and I think we're gonna get through it with, like, all of the pieces that we would need in order to uh, follow up by defeating the remainder of whatever army they have because the we have enormous defensive scaling here we haven't used it yet in this fight but we have a mass rejuvenation which means that like if if we were to have a fight with a follow-up army um that we would be able to immediately just clump all of our units together heal and then it would not be an issue uh that we have guys coming in at like half hp Oh, this will apply marked. Sure. No, it won't. Walker, why would you why would you say that? You know it won't apply marked. 66% chance. 66% chance it happens every time. Um God damn it. Are we gonna have to charge you this way? Is that the plan? I guess we're gonna charge you this way. That is the plan. Boom! Get out of here. Oh! Actually, if we get this close can we get you we can get you all right cool yeah fire mage lock ba boom haha -ha. your friend is now a zombie <laughs> all right cool let's see uh that is a daylight spear Means we are going to need to tear apart brain cell deficient build suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Like, go. I would say post anything on on um on like on the channel in the community thread whenever I start posting stuff. Cause like I'll I'll probably leave it up to people to vote on for next week. Um, again. But if you have a build that you want me to try out, like I I'm down for it, especially if it's something that I think is going to be interesting. Oh, are they routing? Oh, man, they're routing. All right, it's time for revenge. I want to kill as many of these suckers as we can. Oh, you already did that, Walker. Walker, just end the fight. Like, it's the fight's over. God, jeez. You do this every time. <laughs> Walker, you can't... You can't just talk to yourself in the third the third person all all day for a stream. That's not a stream idea. Um, but I do I do want to do I do want to do some more uh, single player um, Age of Wonders for content because I think it's fun. Um, and so if you have like suggestions, I guess we'll probably do a like how to build a build stream because um, I do think that enough people want it that if I'm careful, I feel like I can do it in a way that is not dangerous to the community hopefully because i just like i really don't i i think that if you are not careful about how you rec make recommendations when it comes to builds that you can make people feel like there's more authority in terms of what builds are good and bad then that's actually true yeah do, do i find myself funny or or really annoying it a little bit both it could be a little bit both <laughs> that, that, I think that's I think that's a natural a natural reaction. I can't believe that this is the only one. This is the only one who won't route. Just get out of here. You're giving me reflection damage too, butthole. I guess if I were to kill this unit, if I if I were to have killed that unit instead of not killing that unit, then I probably I guess it could have done it. I guess I guess I probably could have removed the. God damn it. Whatever. Frozen. Frozen. Got slowed on me? Are you kidding? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Yeah, so what what uh, what build you got? What are you what are you working with here, kid? 
because like there's there's definitely a lot of builds available in the game that we probably have not worked around with um just by virtue of the universe working the way that it does uh you know uh, whatever I'm just gonna go here and defend because there there it is do we get it give me the claim victory now ba boom excellent Oh my god, we actually only... We lost basically nothing. We lost a little bit of uh, mana and a little bit of casting points. We lost a Corrupt Soul, which against High, like, kind of amazed that we almost didn't lose that and then only lost it at the last second. And then we lost a Lesser Snow Spirit that we brought added at the last, the last minute. So, like, now they've got eight units here. We could kill that pretty easily and then finish this. Um, but... Because because we are trying to get through as many of these as possible. Thank you, Pico. Um, I think we, I think I'm gonna call it there for this for this feudal druidic terraformers ex exploration. I think we could try it again and see different ways to, to make it work. But unfortunately, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if it shows up in auto resolves. But the ones that we looked at the AI would just like n never use the steadfast mechanic. And that's a big part of what makes feudal work in a, in a manual combat scenario. I think if the AI had a little bit of logic in regards to like the headliner buffs, the buffs that are supposed to be the thing that make the faction good. Like if Reavers, if the AI regarding uh, marked was a lot more respectful, then it would probably make Reavers a lot better. And I think if the AI regarding the utilization of steadfast as a buff were better, then it would make Feudal a lot better. Because like here, if we hadn't lost some of those units at the beginning of the game, then I think we could have easily gotten into Defenders pretty quickly, because I've had some runs where that has happened. And then whenever you get Defenders early, it makes your Ancient Wonder fights a lot easier, and it makes your infestations easier. And like, they don't necessarily make it so that, you know, you have insanely, insanely high um, knowledge per turn. But like, that's not an unreasonable number. Um, and, and hopefully if we, if we keep refining feudal, we can come up with something that's, that's like maybe useful. Um, yeah. Baylors from chaos affinity zero. Yeah. Baylors are incredible. So let's see here. We got a question in chat before we, before we sign off here. Zero is, is asking, uh, you can get to a turn 40. It still isn't strong enough because chaos tomes are mediocre. Um, yeah, no, it, it is absolutely salvageable. So the first thing that you should know, of course, is that we're, if you're getting good value out of your Baylors, you're getting value out of your Baylors with, with this, with Sunder the Earth. Sunder the Earth is going to do an outrageous amount of damage, and it's going to inflict three Sunder defense on everybody on the other side. So, like, these things are uh, incredible with the damage output that they have right there. They also have the Chaos Brand ability, which it, this is something that is obviously not as good against uh, enemy units that are control loss immune which all of the mythics are going to naturally be. But if they if you're fighting against enemies that aren't ca um, immune to Chaos Brand, then that is also just a very powerful tool to have available to you. The combination of those things means that Baylors really do a lot of a lot of work when you get them down early. They do have problems with Death Explosion because that makes it so that like Tome of Oblivion can take these guys out by just, you know, oblivioning them once and then uh, and then they explode, and then they don't come back because they exploded. But Baylor is actually, they, they do perform. Um, the Chaos Tomes that you would want generally to get there on a, on a quick order path is that you generally want to go through Tome of Pandemonium, so that way you can pick up Chaos Eaters. Chaos Eaters are fiends. You don't have to do that anymore because now um, in fight for power in the tome of the demon gate you also get access to demon kin which means that you have fiend types on all of your racial units and because another really powerful chaos to tome tome of devastation gives you war breeds if you take uh the demon kin and you have war breeds in play then you can turn your war breeds with fight for power into balors but you in order to get there so you don't need you need six chaos tomes or six chaos affinity in order to pick those up. That's sort of like the real downside is that it is sort of a, a narrow a narrow band of tomes that you're that you want to look at. Like tome of revelry still is pretty good. Scalds aren't as powerful now that they don't have the 
the haste ability. I want to play around with them and see how they actually rank. Because they did also lose some HP and they lost some damage. Um, and this being, you know, like a 60% insanity in a world with mythics that, that are resistant or immune to it is not great. But like the the these guys here, this is a pretty a pretty solid tome. Um generally dragons is too slow, but some sometimes you can make dragons work if you're going to do dragons then you're probably going into order though and you're picking up the the stuff there irreplaceable units like the imperium balor oh yeah the the one that you get up in the empire uh tree that one's a little spookier because if you get it and it dies then like you'll never get it back but like that's okay the you know this is a video game like sometimes Sometimes, sometimes you're like, all right, we got a druidic terraformers plan that we're going to make work with this, with this feudal faction. And then you die three times in 36 turns like that. That is the way that the game goes sometimes when it, especially when you're on auto resolve. But if you, if you're generally getting good value out of this, you, you will. Um, this is a very, very big bonus. You just need 500 chaos affinity out there, which is absolutely bananas very it is very very big uh it's it's just that yeah in in auto resolves uh especially like this this one unit alone is generally not going to be enough um when it comes to auto resolves you really want to have things that are going to perform well on their on on their own yeah it's a chunky boy it should be able to to do whatever it wants to uh but yeah i think that's going to be it for today Tomorrow we are going to be doing a multiplayer stream. I think we're going to continue with our multiplayer streams from last weekend. We haven't quite like nailed that down, but we'll, we'll have that conversation probably this evening. Um, I think, I think Baylor's are the thing is they're just so they're so early. They're so early. They're the earliest tier fives that you can get pretty much. Although now they are really competing with uh, the Tome of the Reaper and Summon Reaper. Like this is, this went from a spell that was kind of like meme worthy to something that is ridiculous. This, if we do another necromancy run um, in like single player in the future, then we're going to do it where we're trying to get to the to Tome of the Reaper because this thing is so good. Yeah, if you're if you want to use uh, Baylor's, then you got a couple of recommendations. One, you're going to need something that deals strengthened. Um, cause you, in order to get the most value out of your mythics, cause they don't get unit enchantments, you need to get in battle, uh, buffs, things like bolstered resistance, bolstered, uh, defense, strengthened haste, those sorts of things. Um, and you can do that. You can do a lot of that actually. And so people like complaining about them not getting unit enchantments are not understanding the way that buffs and debuffs work in the game um there are a lot of them and you can get a lot of them on on mythics and then they can do a lot of work but if you're doing that you do need to make sure that you have the tools necessary to actually support them and you know if, if you're really if you really want to get the most out of your balors and you really really want to get the most most out of your balors then you go into cosmic overdrive because they are magic origin units they, they would move 48 movement speed and get 30 percent extra damage so like then your your balors move uh basically up an extra tier in terms of their damage um but i don't think that they're intended to actually compete with the things like reapers and whatnot simply because again like the the things that you need in order to get those fight for power this is a very low casting cost right this is 60 casting cost versus uh Where's the casting cost on this? It's underneath your your little pop out chat thing, Walker. This is like two hundred something. Let me see, let me see what it says under here. Yeah, that's two hundred casting points. And so like the the dimension in terms of resources that you're competing with um, when it looks at like Baylor's versus everybody else is that those are a lot easier to spam. You can get like four or five really really quickly if you come into your tier fours with a reasonable number of of chaos eaters built up and now because you don't need just chaos eaters built up you can also get there with just demon kin war breeds or demon kin tier fours uh like transmuters or whatever you can you can get a lot of uh a lot of baylors really quickly 
Yeah, Baylor would probably be best um, in Barbarian. That's a pretty good one, just in terms of like getting damage down and and getting your your economy grown. Uh, you want to build a really really big economy ASAP, so that way you can just get them out on the board and and fight people because they do drop off in comparison to other tier fives. Uh, other tier fives can definitely outscale them pretty quickly. It's but if you get your Baylors fifteen turns before their tier fives then it doesn't matter because if your bailers are out there eating their their empire uh then their economy is gonna is gonna fall apart it's not gonna be great okay well that's that's me for today um hope you guys have enjoyed our first single player build stream here with druidic feudal i think next time uh we're probably gonna do like Tome of Mist Industrious, because that that was the thing that was second. But if you got if you got questions, like throw them up on the on the channel. I will gladly answer them. And um, if we are trying to look for a way to do Baylor's as a build, then then we could do that. We could we could go back and and try to try to reverse that math. I just think that they're generally a little worse on the current patch, just because of the the big buffs to to other mythics. All right, and that's Walker. Take care.